Arabia in the wilderness. They eventually landed in, in Israel. Then we should see the DNA of true Kushites, like in South Sudan, like the Dinka, like the Anawa, like the Shilik, like the Nuba, like the Nur. We should see the DNA of African pygmies, Hatsa, San, Sandaway. We should see the DNA of certain people like the Lua people that are the descendants of the ancient Egyptians and, and Kushite Nubians. But we should see their DNA in ancient Israel. If they lived there and they died there millions, a hundred, hundred thousand of years ago, we should see their, their DNA in the ground. But here's the thing. The Jews don't like to always uh, let people dig up the, the ancient burial grounds of these skeletons in Israel because they say that's against the law. They say we can't we can't defame these, these ancient burial sites of our ancestors, the Israelites. Don't do that. However, although it's illegal to do, you know, DNA tests and to be sharing these DNA tests and the DNA test, the DNA test doesn't show uh, what people think that they show. There's a reason why they don't want you to do the DNA test in Israel. And it's a reason why there's not too many DNA studies done in the uh, uh, ancient Israel archaeological bones in Israel because they don't want you to find out these truths about what the Bible says. Actually, it says and correlating it to see, OK, if there was a mixed multitude of Egyptian men, Kushite men, Canaanite, African bigmy men and Egyptian men and Israelite men that came into Israel, even if we want to say that Assyrians and the Babylonians uh, and the Elamites um, came into Israel, where is their DNA? Who are the Assyrians today? Who are the descendants of the Babylonians today? Who are the descendants of the El Elamites today? Who are the descendants of a fox set today? Who are they? You know, and these are the things that nobody wants to touch in modern Judaism, uh, the white jury, even the Hebrew Israelites today. They don't want to touch this stuff. I'm the one that touches it because I'm the one bringing out all this stuff and proving who is who and how it connects back to the land of Sub-Saharan Africa and not the land of Israel. And it's the whole reason why the, the movie Hebrews to Negro Three Sound the Alarm has been shadow banned and suppressed and 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 really been under the attack since I came out with it. Now here's this is this is the story of Shonda. For five years, I've been I was dealing with a, a, a disc manufacturing company to make all the Hebrews to Negroes DVDs that you see on Amazon. Hebrews to Negroes Wake Up Black America, Hebrews to Negroes 2, Revelation, The Age of the Awakening, The Curse of Israel, Part One and Two, The Message, and then all of a sudden, all of a sudden, when I when I submit uh, Hebrews to Negro Sound Alarm, uh, the file, I send it to them and give them all the artwork for the DVD. For like a week or two, they didn't answer my emails. And so I said, hey, um, I sent you my file. Uh, we transfer and uh, I seen you guys downloaded it. Uh, are you guys working on auth authoring and mastering the DVD? and getting it into production so that you can ship the DVDs to my house. And they said, oh, oh no, well, um, unfortunately we, it was brought, it's, this is what they said in the email, it was brought to our attention that your content is blah, 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 blah. And therefore we have to sever business relations, relationships with you and we can no longer manufacture the DVDs. And I said, who was, I said, who was the person that brought this to your attention? Because surely, surely in the last five years, you guys have not seen and looked at any of my movies. Because if you did, you would have said this a long time ago. Or somebody would have brought to your attention five years ago that the movie Hebrew to Negroes Wake of Black America, you know, is now making us feel comfortable and we need to not manufacture it. But you've been manufacturing hundreds of thousands of DVDs. Before the Kyrie incident, after the Kyrie incident, tons of DVDs manufacturing them. There's no problem there. All of a sudden, now that I want to manufacture these two new movies, uh, H2N3, Sound the Alarm, now you're going to tell me, no, we can't do it. So these, these, there's a concerted effort in this movie that I, that I came up with January the 1st, but I showed it in Tampa, Florida. They don't want people to see what's in the movie because it, it touches on all these things that we're talking about today and how. 
Despite all the things people might say, well, well, did Jesus get crucified in, in, in the Congo? Uh, did, did Jesus get crucified in, 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 in modern day Israel? John the Baptist, Pontius Pilate, is there proof of the Romans? Da, 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 da. They have a million questions. But the, the thing is, we have, to, we have to not look at always what we see in our King James English authorized and translated Bible and the people that's given us this history. We have to look at reality. Reality. What is reality? Reality is DNA. Reality is DNA. Who are the Kushites today? Who are the Egyptians today? Who are the descendants of the real putbacks? Not white, not white Arabs like Muammar Gaddafi. Who are the descendants of the real Canaanites today? Who are the real Israelites today? Who are the real Assyrians and Babylonians today? What is their DNA? Can we prove their DNA is intermixed with our DNA? What is their language? Where is it at? These animals. It, it goes back to what we originally been talking about, that it's been a worldwide conspiracy from the very beginning to cut us off from the remembrance of ourselves and also from our land. But as you said, we have to open up our eyes. And when you talk about the fact that Hebrews to Negroes, whether it's part one, two or three, has really just been muzzled by the greater uh, media and social media. And I remember, as a matter of fact, around the time, um, of the Kyrie incident, that none of the none of the talking heads wanted to even say the name of your yeah. movie. They didn't want to even say the name because even in saying the name, they would you know the disconnect would be clear for everyone to see when you're trying to present your film as an anti quote unquote anti Semitic film when the title is Hebrews to Negroes Wake Up Black America. So they don't even want us to even have that idea in our heads of our true lineage and especially not marrying us into the true land. But, you know, and for those of you who are just joining us, welcome. We are having a phenomenal conversation with author, with producer, Ron Dalton Jr., who has graced this channel to speak concerning the transatlantic slave trade. Particularly, we are discussing the UN's Day of Remembrance to the victims of the transatlantic slave trade and the UN's international uh, decade for the people of African descent. So we're talking about the slave traders and what they knew, what they knew about the true land of Israel, the true land of Canaan. And so um, for those of you who are just joining us, please definitely get those thumbs up, get those likes. And also for those of you who would like to support this platform, you could do so by Super Chat, Super Sticker. You could do so through Cash App as well as PayPal. But what I want to do is get back to this part here where we were talking about particularly um, the land that is presented to us as the true land of Israel. There's a question, and I kind of held this here for a while because I wanted to not ignore this question here, particularly concerning the Bantus. Hassan says, is there any evidence for a Roman occupancy in South Africa? There are Bantu teachers that say Hebrews and Greeks stole the Bantu scrolls from them, that we are not Israelites, but Bantus. And I've actually heard that argument myself. So I'd like you to speak to that because you said, how would the language, how would the people be able to have these words that are Hebrew dialect in their languages? But this is the pushback from some of the Bantu teachers. What do you have to say in regards to that? <laughs> we, we, we know that the ancient Greeks and Romans, uh, they were able to travel the Nile River. Um, the, the David Livingston, and these other guys, these white guys, they weren't the first people to explore the Nile River. <laughs> they were not the first people. You know, if, if, if they can, if they can have, if they can talk about in the Book of Maccabees, elephants in these hippodromes, lions in these hippodromes, where did they get these elephants and lions from? Um, where did they get, where do they have these things from? Elephants don't live in Egypt. Lions don't live in Egypt. You know, uh, these different things, they don't live in Egypt. We have to we have to look, we have to ask ourselves this question is when you look at the Bible, does anybody have a picture, a real picture or a video of the first temple? Does anybody have a video or a real picture of the second temple? The answer is no. Does anybody know what the Samaritan people even look like back? in the day because the samaritans you know were in the time of christ he says do not go into the way of the gentiles and the samaritans go to the sheep of the lost israel 
Who are the Samaritans that Jesus talked about? Where are they today? Don't tell me that they are these people that today in Israel called the Samaritans because if you look at their DNA, their DNA will tell you exactly who they are, even though they even they tell you that they're a Samaritan. If the Samaritans are the people that are the remnant of the Babylonian or Assyrian invaders, then we have to ask ourselves, who today are the descendants of Ashur? And who today are the descendants of Arfarxad, uh, which is the lineage of, of Iraq or Babylon? Who are they today? Who today is still has still has a, a, a daughter language that's rooted to the old ancient cuneiform Babylonian and Assyrian script? Because there is people today that have evidence that their language, their traditions and customs, and their DNA and their history can connect them back to ancient Elam, ancient Ashur, ancient Arfaxad, even ancient Persia. And it ain't the white Arabs that we see today in the Middle East. It's people in the in this valley region. Is there any DNA evidence proof that we see the, the Dravidian South Indians or the North Orient Indians or any of these other nations, Central Indians, that they are in ancient Israel? Is there is there any DNA evidence of this, that they were in ancient Israel, meaning occupying this land and, and allowing some of the Israelites to come? Is there any evidence of this? And you'll, and you'll see that the answer is no. But when you look at the DNA on the maternal side and, and when you look at the DNA on the father's side, and when you look down to the genetic level of the melanin, the melanin content in Bantu people, you will see that this genetics of Bantu people and Dravidian South Indians, the ones that are dark, the ones that are dark, they speak Tamil, they speak Sinhalese, they speak Kannada, they speak Telugu, some of them speak Malayalam. Their DNA can be connected, intertwined in our DNA. What about the DNA of the ancient Persians? Who are the ancient Persians today? Are they the white people, the white Arabs in Iran? Of course not. When you look at the ancient language of Old Persian and Zoroastrianism, when you when you scroll down the family tree of Old Persian, where do you get where do you, where do you go? Where, where does it end up at? You're gonna see it ends up in India. It doesn't end up with Arabic. Persian has nothing to do with Arab, the Arabic language or the Turkic language or the Turkish language. You know, so when people say these things, well, is there any evidence of Roman occupation in South Africa? Is there any evidence of Roman occupation in these areas? Well, we have to we have to ask yourself, well, one, when you look at history, we know that. Alexander the Great existed. Yes, he did exist. We know that after him, the Romans came. Yes, the Greco-Romans were brothers. They were like basically kinfolk. But we do know that in ancient times, before these guys even lived in these areas, that we had people that were living in modern-day Levant, modern-day Israel. Now, here's the thing. This is this is what I talk about in my movie. Um, it says that it says that Esau left the land uh, of Canaan and went far away from his brother because it says that the two of them, they just had too much livestock and too much cattle and too many kids and it was, just, it was too small. Like, I was like, wait a minute, it's too small. But anyway, it says that Esau went far away and he went into the land of the Horites and he, 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 his Bible says that he dispossessed them. Well, when I break down in the Bible, I say, what does the bunch of people knew about all these things prior. They knew about the giants. They have a word for giants in Zimbabwe, in the Bantu languages of like of Espartini or Swaziland. They'll tell you what it means in their language. And it correlates to the word Zimbabwe. In Zimbabwe in South Africa, you see in Malawi they have they have stories of giants. Giants that existed. Who killed the giants? The Bantu people did. Not the natives, not the Canaanites. So when we look at look at the 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 Horites the Horites um, in in Hebrew the, the word Hor or Kor means cave or a den like a lion goes in a cave or a den you know or or, or a caveman lives in a cave or a rock structure and when you look at Sierra we see in our Bible Sierra the Horite <laughs> we see Sierra oh that must be his name Sierra the Horite but in ancient Hebrew they have a they have a way of of describing the words that we see today. Just like Abraham, uh, Nisinga, Nisingi, and Kikongo means father of many nations. But we just say Abraham. 
So Sierra the Horite means hairy, shaggy, in some cases demon, cave dweller. Well, wait a minute. Who is hairy? Who is shaggy? Who lives in caves and dens? Okay. In history, the Neanderthal, the Neanderthal man. So Homo Neanderthalus, where can we see the majority of all his skeletons? In caves. Where can we see that at? Because he was a cave dweller. In Africa? No, in Israel. In Jordan? No, in Israel. In Jordan, Ron? Jordan? No, Ed Edom? Jo no, Ron. It's in Israel. Why is there so many Neanderthal caves in Israel and their skeletons? And wait a minute. Inside and outside the caves, why are there Homo sapien bones too? So now we're seeing Homo sapien bones in the caves with Neanderthal bones. Were they were there, were there human beings and Neanderthal cave dwellers living side by side, intermixing with each other back in ancient times? Well, when you look at the story of Esau's son, I think it's Eliphaz, and Timna the Horite, Timna the Horite, the daughter of Seir. Timna married Eliphaz, and they had a child. Who was the child? Amalek. Amalek had the had the DNA of a cave woman and the DNA of an Edomite. An Edomite would have been a non Neanderthal person. He would have been a Homo sapien. The Horites, we don't know where they came from. The Horites existed before we even see them in the Table of Nations in Genesis ten. So where in the world did these Horites come from? Why they dwell in caves? And why is Israel seeing that the first people in Israel? And the majority of these, these Neanderthal caves are in Israel, not Jordan and Israel. And so when you ask yourself these questions, well, why are they seeing the mandible and, and maximum that resembles sort of like a Neanderthal? And then they see the cranial vault that resembles a Homo sapien because now they start to interfuse their two DNAs, Neanderthal DNA and Homo sapien DNA. Same thing the Bible says that Esau and the Horites did. None of this stuff was going on in Sub-Saharan Africa. When you look at the caves in Sub-Saharan Africa, like ancient caves in the Congo, in Ethiopia, in South Africa, in Malawi, in other areas, you'll see the caves. And what's their DNA? What's the DNA in these caves? You'll see E1B1A, E1B1, E1B1, which is EP2. You'll see B2B, which is the DNA of the pygmies. You might even see B2A which is a pygmy Bantu mix, and you'll see these DNA, like, wait a minute, and you see L2, L3, L1, L0. Are these the DNA types seen in the modern-day Jews today? No. Are these the DNA, maternal DNA haplogroups seen in Neanderthal people? No, the, ne the Neanderthal maternal DNA is X, like X. So what about the Ashkenazi Jews? Do they have the maternal DNA L2, L5, L4, L3, L1 in abundance like we do? The answer is no. Do they have the DNA of the ancient Kushites, the DNA of the ancient Egyptians, the DNA of the ancient um, Kushites? No, they do not. You have African Americans today that say, well, I'm, I got my DNA test and it didn't show E1B1A. I said, what does it show? R1B? And it's, yeah, how'd you know? I said, um, in your paternal ancestry, was there anybody on your father's side that was a white man? And they say, yeah. Yeah, Ron, it was, Ron. You, you're right, Ron. Uh, my that, great-grandfather. That's, that's crazy. My, my husband has that. <laughs> yeah, he, 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 they always say the same thing. Uh, Spain, Portugal, the Netherlands, British, Scottish, Irish. They say something. And I say, I say, and I asked them, I said, this, ask, your, ask your parents, was there a white man somewhere in your paternal family tree? Just, yeah, just, look, just look it up. Yeah, Ryan, you're right. Yeah, you're right. I don't care how dark you are. You can be darker than you can be as, as, as dark as it can be, like Bernie Mac. But the DNA does not all the DNA does not lie. Now, there's different DNAs that R and B that's seen in Tainos, that's seen in Torres and Houses and Fulani's DNA R and B that's seen in Europeans. Just like this, there's, there's different E uh, half groups like E V thirteen that's seen in Ashkenazi Jews and all that stuff. But when you look at these things in ancient Israel. And we know that that the Neanderthals, they lived before the Romans. They lived before the Greek culture and civilization. And so when we know this to be true, when we know this to be true, then we have to ask ourselves, when the Romans and the Greeks came and the Edomites were there, did they conspire? Because in, in the beginning of time, Cain and Abel, Cain and Abel, 
Cain, Abel, both had a task. God favored Abel. Cain said, what about me? You know, and, and Cain killed Abel. Look at Esau and Jacob and the blessing. Esau said, can you bless me even though you gave the blessing away? And his father said, no, I can't do that. He said, oh, man, he just came and stole my blessing. And he did this. He did that. Esau, Esau always wanted to usurp in, in, in his, his blessing and get to, to be what he, I guess, was intended he believes to be. So why wouldn't he conspire to change and to, uh, to, 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 to do an identity theft? Remember, at the end of the Persian or in the middle of the Persian rule, we have 400 years of silence. From the book of Malachi, Chronicles, um, Ezra, Nehemiah, we have 400 years that's like, like God just disappeared. No, no prophets, no writings, no nothing. Like it just ended, like poof, just stopped. What happened in that period of time? These are things we need to ask ourselves. Like, like we need to ask ourselves, like, why did it just end like that? And, and for those 400 years, where were the Israelites? If the Israelites were now uh, fluent in Greek because the Greeks came and they Hellenized everybody and say, everybody, y'all are going to have to learn how to speak Greek now. Just like in, in America, we had to learn how to, the, the slaves had to eventually learn how to speak uh, English. In colonial West Africa, you had to learn how to speak English or French. In Angola, you had to learn how to speak Portuguese. If for, if for hundreds of years, from 300... BC into the time of Christ. If the Greeks and the Romans conquered these lands of the Israelites, Bantu Israelites, and they said, You guys, you gotta start using the working language. You guys gotta get with the program. We're here now. And we're using Latin and Greek. Learn it. Don't you think if we are fluent speaking English, black people, it's been here in America 400 years. Where are the fluent speaking Greek and Latin Bantu people in sub Saharan Africa? So you must say, we're the Maccabees, we're the descendants of the Maccabees. Well, the Maccabees, they knew Greek. They knew Greek. Flavius knew Greek. A lot of these guys knew Greek. So, but where is these Bantu people that learn Greek and they learn Hebrew and they knew it fluently? And they, and, 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 and they didn't leave until this period of time, but then when they left, they still had, they still had to retain some of the language, whether they decided to not use it anymore or not, that's still up for, up for subject matter. But a lot of this stuff that we, we want to utilize, because one of the main things people are going to say is, where is this? There is the proof of the Roman and Greek occupation in Africa. And then I'm going to say to you, where is the proof of the mixed multitude DNA of the Kushites, the Egyptians, the, uh, the, the Canaanites? Where is their DNA in modern day Israel? Where is the DNA of the ancient Assyrians, the ancient Persians, the ancient Babylonians in modern day Israel? Where is that at? Because it's not there. And, and and you have to also look. You can say, well, you know what? They didn't. It wasn't a lot of it wasn't a lot of Egyptian men and Cushitic men and Canaanite men that went with Moses into the land of Canaan. I said, okay, well, let's go to the maternal DNA. Are you trying to tell me now that when they went into the land of Canaan, were living in the land of Canaan, their mothers were not Egyptian mothers, Cushite mothers, Canaanite mothers? Maybe they have mothers that were Persian. Assyrian, Babylonian, because remember in the book of Nehemiah, Ezra, it said that they had taken on the daughters of this land and had learned their languages. So when you marry a woman, and I, let's say I marry a woman that's Chinese, then my kids are going to learn English and Chinese because the mother speaks Chinese. And so the, the, the child's going to learn Chinese. If I married an Igbo woman, my child's probably going to learn, learn how to speak Igbo and English. So you have to say, okay, if the Bible says this on both the father and the mother's side, these who the Israelites intermarried, these who were their wives and husbands, where is that DNA proof in the land of Israel? We know that the material DNA of the Canaanites and the Cushites and the Egyptians is not H and HV and J and K 
and our, you know, all these, these DNA help groups that are seen in Europeans and Ashkenazi and Sephardic Jews, we know that because Africa has specific maternal DNA help groups, meaning that it's only only centered in this continent, like where you're gonna where you're gonna see L2, L0, L3, L3, L4, L5. Just like we can say that lions are indigenous to Africa, gazelles, antelopes, impalas, giraffes, zebras, uh, rhinoceros, the ostriches, these animals are indigenous to Africa. We can prove this. So we need to prove that if these people are so-called indigenous or secondary indigenous to the land of Israel, then the DNA should match up. And the DNA at the end of the day trumps anything because one thing we cannot change is DNA. One thing we cannot change is DNA. We can we can get any type of archeological relic. We can grab it. We can take it to another country. We can rename that, that, that land, uh, Bethlehem, uh, and Jericho and and uh, and Benoni, just there's, there's places in South Africa called Bethlehem, Benoni, Jericho, you know Hebron, in in South Africa. <laughs> so you know and it's on the map too. So we in in Canaan's land. But I want to talk. I want to get to that point. But I have a question before I get to that point because again we're gonna tie it into the so-called state of Israel as you answer that point in terms of the maps. But before I do that, I just want to send a reminder to everyone that we are here um, because of the UN's Day of Remembrance. And I want to let everyone who is in the New York area know that um, I am partnering with Kingdom Harbin Harbinger Ministries on March 24th, 2024 at 1 p.m to discuss this very important issue, Descent for Greatness March on the UN. I will be with Brother Divine Prospect as well as all these wonderful speakers here talking about these very important and pertinent issues regarding who we are as a people who has been dispersed through the transatlantic slave trade. And I also want to thank those of you for your support who have given so far. I'd like to thank Sister Malaka, Abba Yah placed a continuous hedge of protection around our brother Ron for his service to your people. We praise Abba Yah. All praises to the Most High for that. Run Back Turbo, fun fact, Bantus are native to Africa, as well as brother Bruce Paris. Shalom, Sister Shonda, I love your work. I see you have my brother Ron from Detroit speaking troops. Let Ron know Blacks from Detroit receiving hospital in Solomon's Temple. Bishop Bonner, support him and they are praying for you. So thank you so much for those of you who have given and thank you for your prayers and your support. And at this time, I actually, before I ask my question, I want to segue a little bit because we have another special guest who is joining us. And um, this brother has been doing extraordinary work in the, the realm of music and not just that in the realm of music, but in the defense of Yasharel. And he is a very good friend of our guest, our special guest, Ron Dalton Jr. So we want to welcome in Brother Lorvin, son of Shemite. Welcome, Brother Lorvin. How you doing? Hey, Shalom. How y'all doing? Can you hear me? <laughs> we can hear you, brother. Okay. Hey, Ron. What's up? <laughs> what's up? Um, man, it's uh, I'm sorry. You know, obviously I'm tardy. I didn't get the message with it starting at 11, and I'm overslept big time because I was so tired. But I want to say Shalom to everybody out there who's listening. So it's glad to be on. Obviously, you already know Ron is one of those people that sparks a lot of uh, controversy and things of that nature because, you know, truth has never been popular. You see what I'm saying? You see, when Yahusha came and he started telling truth, you saw what they did to him, you know, and the idea of truth is what it does is that it overpowers uh, status quo of governments and rulers and principalities and things of that nature. And that's what truth does. And so we know that this world is being ruled by darkness on those who are in high places. So when you start to tell truth, what it does is rattle those positions. And so the key is you have to go after the person who's telling truth, you know, to try to discredit them, to try to do whatever you can to shut them up. But, you know, when the most high is on his anointed, there's nothing really you can do. So the most high was on his anointed, which is Christ. Uh, he he uh, he willingly gave up his life to where he was risen. You know, what I'm saying he rose, and so no one can stop that. 
And our job is to do the same thing. Our job is to have the spirit of Mashiach, live this thing out, tell truth to power. And then on that day, when it comes, we can raise just like Christ did. So as long as you tell the truth, man, ain't nothing come against you. So pray for our brother, Ron. Pray for me. Pray for you, Ashonda. Pray for everyone that's laboring in this work in telling truth and telling truth. And we know once we talk, start to tell truth, the adversary is going to come. And those are those adversary just means Hasatan. And just like Ron always say, but I mean, Shalom, that's my introduction to this. I'm going to try to listen. And if I have any questions, of course, I'll, I'll go ahead and dive in. Well, thank you. And thank you so much for the encouraging words and reminders. We got to keep our eyes fixed on our Savior, Yahuwah, Yahusha HaMashiach. We are so grateful because, you know, he is just opening up um, just the supernatural doors for us and to be able to have access to have these conversations. And, you know, uh, unfortunately, y'all, Brother Ron gets shut down so many times. He's talked about this a lot. And especially when it comes on our platforms, uh, thankfully, he has been able to speak on a lot of platforms on the continent. Um, if you all have not checked out, he's been very busy with interviews uh, with brothers and sisters on the continent. Um, and those videos are still up, praise Yah. But for videos like ours, oftentimes they get attacked. So I am just letting you all know, if you have the opportunity to download this, please download this, okay? Because I'm going to keep this up as long as I can. Go ahead, brother. Yeah, you got a hand up. You want to say something? No, no. <laughs> um. We see a lot of Israelites on YouTube and the camps, they got Israelite channels for just about every state in America and outside of America. And they're doing interviews uh, in other countries, you know, like IUIC. And since when do people get strikes for interviewing Ron Dalton? Benet almost lost his, Benet almost lost his channel for having me on his channel in promoting the Great Tribulation Conference. Lawrence has received strikes and video takedowns for simply having me on his channel. Ashonda has received strikes and video takedowns simply for interviewing Ron Dalton. Go Black to Africa has had video takedowns and strikes for having me on this platform. So he can't have me on this platform no more. You know, so a lot of people, you know, in America, uh, the, the, they're watching what Ryan Dalton says on YouTube, even on Instagram. They will they will even tell you before you um, decide to follow me, they'll say, are you sure you want to follow this guy, Ron Dalton? Even if you even if you decide to read the comments, they'll say, are you are you sure you want to read the comments? <laughs> it's like these things are crazy. And so we have to ask ourselves, like like the Sean has said. During the Kyrie incident, they were on the TV saying, where's all the heat for Amazon? Where's all the heat for, for uh, this, you know, even um uh, that guy, I forgot his name, Lamont, Mark Hill, whatever his name is. He was like, where's all the heat for Amazon? And, da, 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 where, and, and Kyrie Irving, he should have got, he should have did what he did. Shannon Sharp, all these guys are saying all this bad stuff about Kyrie and about Amazon and, and promoting hate and making money at the film. But, and even, even Kyrie said, you know, I, I, the guy. The guy said he said, I, I think um, Adam Silver. I uh, wanted to hear the words. I apologize. Uh, were you? Uh, are you going to apologize for um, posting that link to a film uh, that hurt people? And Kyrie, Kyrie said, Well, you guys keep telling me I need to apologize, but I'm not the one that made the documentary. And and it's like it's like well, where's where's the heat for the guy that made the documentary? Where is all the heat and all the smoke? For the guy that made the documentary, they don't want to say my name. They don't want to say the name of the movie. They don't want to say we challenge this guy Ron Dalton to a debate. Get him on CNN. Get him off Newsweek. Get him on Pierce Morgan. Get him on the Breakfast Club. Get him on Vlad TV. Get him on this. Get him on that. Get him. Get get him on Candace Owens. Get him on Brother Boys Rockets. Get him on. Get him. Just get him on YouTube and let's hear what this guy has to say. Why he made this movie and let's and let's crucify this filmmaker Ron Dalton. No. I was sitting, sitting, sitting. In, I was in, in Florida. Lawrence was with me, you know, getting dental work, going back and forth from Orlando to Tampa, you know, to, to Miami. You know, Lawrence in the car with me. I'm, I'm up here getting oral surgery and getting teeth pulled and all this crazy stuff. And Lawrence was right there. And, and, and he saw, you know, no phone calls, no emails, no interviews, no nothing. They, they're, people are scared. They're scared of the message. Even 
all the way flying to South Africa, flying to South Africa, trying to show the movie here in South Africa at Soweto Theater and, and Johannesburg Theater and Pretoria State Theater. And I got the South African Jewish Board of Deputies, the Embassy of Israel, non-Jewish white groups complaining, filing petitions, hiring lawyers to ban the movie. And I'm fighting these guys like with a double-edged sword, <laughs> punching them doing all this stuff, fighting these guys over here behind the scenes, banned from YouTube, banned from Facebook, banned from Clubhouse, deep platform off of GoFundMe so that nobody can, nobody, I can't use GoFundMe, donate to GoFundMe, can't do that anymore because they took me off. Banned from Airbnb, you know, there's so many things that, they, that they're trying to do to destroy Ron Dalton and to prevent this message that I have to, I'm always having to find a plan B. Oh, they don't want to, they don't want to manufacture my DVDs after five years? I got to get another DVD company to make my DVDs because people say, well, Ron, we want the DVD, we want the DVD in case they, they ban this and ban that. We want to have the physical copy. Well, guys, unless I manufacture hundreds of thousands of DVDs and, and create my own barcode and all this other stuff and shrink wrap, you know, all this stuff, which I don't have a manufacturing uh, um, building or office, I have to get it done by somebody else. You know, so these are the these and and and, and having your own platform like H2N TV and Hebrew TV.com is only uh that's only like a, a safeguard because I knew that at some point the truth is going to be attacked. And those that control our social media, TikTok, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, um, you know, they 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 can they control all these things and they and they and they actively shadow ban everything that I do. You know, so so this is the thing. So you want know, to say these things um, and break down these connections in regards to Africa and the Congo and differences in nature. There's there's, there's forces and uh, powers and 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 people in high places, uh, principalities, spirits, dark spirits. But remember, when the Bible says people in high places, high places, I'm not talking about your average. Joe in Detroit on seven mile, six mile, is working a nine to five. No, they're talking about people that are the elite, the rich, that are the controllers of the media, the mass media and social media that control the billboard companies in America, the top three. They control the top podcast radio stations in America. They control television. They control the Associated Press. They control all these, these organizations that came down on Kyrie hard when he simply tweeted a link to a documentary that subtitled Wake Up Black America. And, and that was that was in itself like, you know, it was Hamas in Israel. No, this is information that they don't want you to have. So they don't want you to wake up. They don't want black America to wake up. They showed you this in 2022. You, Kyrie had to apologize for trying to wake up black America. And he had to pay all that money. He had to go through all the treatment and, and all the, the points that he had to do. And then, he, then he's still playing in the NBA. So this is what we're dealing with right now. And, and, and like we talked about earlier, the slave traders knew the Portuguese, the Spanish, the Arabs, the Dutch West Indian company that also had stakeholders and shareholders that invested and participated in the slave trading business. Google who were the slave traders and the shareholders and stakeholders in the Dutch West Indian company that took slaves from Central Africa, East Africa. Google who else was behind the scenes financing these things. Google who fin who, who helped finance the apartheid. You know, there's a lot of things, you know, there's, there's things who, who own slave ships. Do your research. It's out there. So we understand, you know, some of these things, and, and and then like 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 this may segue into the next thing. If we understand who we are, if we understand who they are, um, who are they? Well, in the Bible, we don't see the word Russia, we don't see the word China, we don't see the word India, we don't see the word Palestine or Lebanon or Egypt or Iraq or Iran or Pakistan. We don't see the word Spain, Portugal, Germany. We don't see these words in the Bible. Um, but who are they? Who are these who are these nations in the Bible that are in Africa right now doing business, making money, dishing out aid packages and loans, buying up huge amounts of land like the size of like the, uh, Great Britain? Who are these people that are in developing inter-trade relationships with Africa? 
Who are the people that are dominating the economy in Africa? Who are the people that are at the top in Africa while the African people are the consumers in the labor force of Africa? Who are these other nations? And, and why are these other nations, why are they in to be there? Why are they here in Africa? There's a reason for that. Yeah, why are they allowed to be there? But see, what we've been having the conversation is about when it comes to us, there's problems. When the those of us who have been told for the longest time that if you don't like it here, go back to Africa, you go to Africa, and then there's problems with the indigenous there. Those There's problems with the continental Africans from the so-called African-American, but yet these Asians and Arabs and Europeans can come over there and they can take over their territories. They can take over all of their precious minerals and they can build up their you know, great buildings and all of their technology and make the continental Africans the working class people. And I don't understand why it is that we as a people can't understand that the game has been played on both of us. And this is a part of the fact that we have been told in the scriptures that we are the people of the book. Deuteronomy 28 has fallen on us, whether we've been dispersed or whether we're on the continent, that we are the oppressed of the nations. And so we have to wake up. We have to have our eyes open to the truth of who we are as a people and stop allowing them to continue to distract us with their fake politics and phony places on maps that they, that, that they have generated, which are not authentic to the true um, portions of scripture that belong to Yashara. Yeah, let me speak to that. Uh, and Ron, you can add to it. Um, I don't think people understand what's going on. I, I think a lot of us do, and we say we do, but when it comes to obedience, we get kind of like blind. We don't really understand what it means to obey. And what I mean by that is that we know everything repeats itself. And when we came out of Egypt, that means at some point life was so good that a lot of people didn't even want to leave. It talks about the cucumbers. It talks about all these different things that they were eating in, in Egypt, especially when they got to the wilderness. And the most I did this for a particular reason, for a specific reason, it had to be. And so now we migrated here. You know, a lot of people say USA is this, this, this is the holy land or it's, it's, it's the place. You know, that's a whole other story. But anyway, we're here now by way of the transatlantic slave trade. Here we in America for 400 years. You have to kind of think about it. All these different generations that they program over and over and over and over again to make us believe that this place is ours, not only that, to enjoy the amenities that this place provides. As you continue to cycle, cycle, this hamster wheel cycle, to the point where they denigrated your homeland and made you believe that it's worth nothing, that there's nothing there. And then when the scripture talks about Zechariah 2, 7, deliver thyself, O that Zion, thou that dwellest with the daughter of Zion, deliver yourself. When people would read that, now they say, you know what? Now nah, we ain't supposed to leave on our own. We ain't, how does it look? The most I going to deliver us when all throughout the scripture, he is the one delivering us through people. And it, 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 they say, it says that we would be destroyed according to Deuteronomy 28. When I say destroy, it's talking about our mental as well. Our spiritualness, we have been totally destroyed. We have been such cowards in this Israelite community. We call ourselves Israelites, but when it comes to actually walking it out, we really are scared. Most of us love the hotels we stay in here. Most of us love the cars we drive here. Most of us love the, the food that looks great, but really poisonous. Most of us love the idea of America. But when it really comes down to it, and you see all the other nations going to Africa except you, except you. You're the only one that bought into the idea that Africa is trash. We are the only one. Everybody else believe elsewhere are great, but we are the only one that think this nation is great. Oh, how do we love the master? Oh, how do we love the oppressor who gives us a piece of cucumber and say, Go ahead and work for me. I will give you a little trinket, just like a dog and his master. You, 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 you train it long enough. Eventually, it's going to serve you. And that's what we do. But we try and it say, come out of her. Physically and in our mentalness. 
Africa is the only place that they're, they're totally denigrated that we don't care about no more. So when we see what has happened, we've been destroyed as a people. We trust everybody else except the most high. Everybody else we trust except the most high. But anyways, you can add to that, Ron. Yeah, um, this got me thinking to what I'm actually um, proposing. Um, and it's similar to, Mar similar to what Marcus Garvey um, proposed. So I've been doing some Zoom meetings. And in Africa, there is land that you can you can lease this land you can you can be gifted this land that you can buy and you can get your uh, title deed or your indenture and so let, let's just say you have a piece of land that's 20 acres or 50 acres and it's five hundred thousand dollars and you start a company and you have 200 shareholders 200 shareholders in this company and your goal is to buy land and to develop it uh, the way that you want now if you divide five hundred thousand dollars into 200 investors you'll see what each investor or shareholder has to put up just to buy the land if you also set aside that same amount of money to develop the land the same amount of money is going to cost 200 shareholders to start a company and buy a, a, a big piece of land, like 50 acres. That same amount of money could be used to develop the land. What can you put on the, what can you put on the land, Mr. Ron Dalton? You can put anything on the land. You can put a, 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 a school, uh, a religious center. You can put a park. You can put a pool. You can put a farm. You can put a solar farm. You can put you know uh, an apartment block that goes up five stories and have one, two, three bedroom uh, units in it. You can put individual homes on a, a 500 square meter stand or a, a 5,300 square feet stand. You can do all these things if we simply practice group economics and support one project. Now, what Martin, and, and, and we're doing this right now, but we have people that are, that are been on the Zooms that are interested in investing in land acquisition and development not only in South Africa, but in other countries like Angola and Congo, the RC, the DRC, uh, and even Ghana and places where there's land available. We just have to come with group economics and, 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 a, and, a, and a belief in the vision and act as a nation. Marcus Garvey, he started Black, the Black Star Line company, and he wanted Black people to buy shares in his company and make money and also be a part of something big. And he was able to buy the Yarmouth freighter, which is a large ship. And he was going to sell that ship to different parts of the, the Caribbean, South America, the Americas, and um, take this ship to Africa to institute international trade. And while we're at it, if you guys uh, come there and you get off the boat and you don't have to worry about the passport, visa um, uh, uh, gateway at the time because at that time there was no passport there was no visa if you decided to stay in africa in this and find your way you could have did so and nobody in africa was going to tell you to get back on that boat and go back home they didn't have the uh, uh i mean they might they might tell you to leave my village and go somewhere else but ultimately there was nothing legal stopping them from deporting us back to America if Garvey got us to the to the continent of Africa. And we see that when he did that, he was met with resistance and the FBI and black agents took him down and a Jewish judge, Julian Mack, sentenced him to the maximum penalty. This is in the movie he Bruce and they go three sound the alarm. And, and so Marcus Garvey, he, it wasn't the black people that was his enemy. It was white America that, that did not want Marcus Garvey to be empowered with group economics to fund him getting more ships. And they had guys on the ship that knew how to how to how to navigate and ride the ship. They had they had they had captains. They had guys that knew exactly how to ride that ship. 
And so it was nothing to stop Marcus Garvey, especially if he got the funding. But they just stopped him completely because they knew ultimately what his uh, end goal was, was to get us out of America. But here's the thing. Like, they don't want us to wait up. Because when Calvary did what he did, shortly after that, the FBI was, was doing videos with the ADL saying, we have multiple programs designed to encounter the rise in anti-Semitism, and we're doing it on all aspects and levels and planes. They actually had to come up uh, and say this on a video. Not, they weren't talking this kind of talk prior to the Calvary incident. After the Calvary incident, the, the director of the FBI was saying all these things like, we got to fight, we got to make it a, a crime and all this stuff. We got to track these guys down. And so it shows you that one, they don't want you to know who you are. They don't want you to wake up. Two, J. Ergo Hoover, the director of the FBI, also does not want black people to go to Africa. So they don't, they don't, they don't want you to wake up to your true identity. The Kyrie Irving incident showed you that. Two, Marcus Garvey and the FBI, uh, you know, the conflict shows you that they don't want us to go back to Africa. And now three, I don't think they want us to know that the true land of Canaan, of the promised land, is in sub-Saharan Africa. And when we look at Israel, how can Israel tell the Congo and suggest to the Congo that you guys need to take Palestinian refugees? When a lot of the a lot of the Middle Eastern countries like Egypt and other countries, they're not even opening their opening up their mouth and saying that we welcome all Palestinian refugees. Like there's there hasn't been not one Middle Eastern country, I don't think, that has openly said that all Palestinians come to my country. We'll take care of you. We'll have all types of aid set up and hotels and empty buildings set up to house you, just like what they're doing in America with, with the people coming across the border. They're not doing that. But because, yep. because they're showing their colonial rule still over the Congolese people. I mean, back from you know King Belgium. So it's a consistent thing. It's it's it's, it's in a modern sense today. But there's a consistent intimidation of the indigenous peoples of the land of those who are dispersed, and that's why we have to have these most pertinent conversations. But you made an excellent point about Marcus Garvey. You talked about how Marcus was in pursuit of restoring our people to the continent, but he was he was stopped. He was by the powers that should not be. He was stopped from his pursuits, and all he had to do was raise the funding. So, chosen by Yah asked an excellent question. She says, honestly, though, in today's terms, do most brews have money to put together to buy land? So, how, how do we navigate? Yeah, yeah, this that? this is what I wanted to address, and Ron, you can yeah, ask me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I had a here we go. Here. Okay. Here we go. Now let, let's ask this question. Do most groups have money to put together to buy land? Well, do, do most groups have money to, to get to put together to do anything? Well, let's start with brews. We're not just brews because we know who we are. We're brews by bloodline, which started in the church and Christianity. The reality of the situation is when you got all these mega churches, all these regular churches that are on every single corner, most of these pastors, they buy jets. They buy yachts. They buy mansion. Who supported these pastors? Brews. They're all brews. Okay. <laughs> when you look at uh, Bethune Cookman College and all these different black universities, where they got black celebrities that gives money and all these different things, we are the one that pays for most of this stuff. Even in your life, a lot of us are broke because we give money out to people. A lot of us are broke because we buy food out every single day. A lot of us are broke. We don't even look at ourselves. We always try to blame other people. Look at yourself. The reality is most brews live over live above their means. That's fact. These are reality. I see it every day. I'm a victim of that. I'll start with me. I've lived above my means. I could probably be almost had a million dollars now. Why? You trying to be like the Joneses and all this and that. We spend money frivolously. That's what we do. But the reality of the situation is, yes, we have money. It don't take much. It really don't. Even if it was $5 or $10, imagine if 1 million brews gives a dollar. That's a million dollars. A dollar. That's a million dollars. A million brews give $2. That's $2 million. You see what I'm saying? 
a million blues gift, ten dollars, which most of us is going to end up spending tomorrow frivolously. That's ten million dollars. So that excuse about brews don't have no money, that's all rubbish. It doesn't make sense. There's no logic in that. This is what America has created us, the, the people that have caused us to do, is to always obfuscate, always bring something else to keep us from being what? Obedient. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Every time there's something, we always find an excuse not to obey and do what it is we're supposed to do. Even for our own good as a collective, we won't even do it. And here is the root of it, because we don't trust one another. That trust for not wanting to trust one another, where's the root of that from? Because we were programmed. They told us not to trust one another. But the most I said, you shall love your neighbor like you should love yourself. That's what the commandment is. But we chose not. We chose not to obey the commandment. We chose to obey what the heathen. We love the heathen, though. We'll give them all of our money. But when it comes to ourselves, we don't even like to do anything to improve ourselves as a collective. So as far as the money is concerned, it's there. That argument is out the door. That comment should never come out of a bruised mouth ever again <laughs> because yeah. we have the money. And that's the yeah. reality. Is we don't like to speak these type of things, but it's there. The, I, the, the key of it is we don't trust one another. Yeah. We know that there's poor among us, but the ones who got the money, our job is to take care of the poor. We yeah. understand that not everybody, scripture say there's always going to be poor among us. That's the reality of the situation. But as far as those that are able-bodied and that's capable, it's there. We don't trust one another. And that's what we need to admit. And the person and the people that taught and, and taught us not to trust one another, look at the media. They're the ones that did it and we bought into it. But it's time to break that cycle. Yahushua paid the price. He paid it. The truth is here now. That's just going to set us free. And that's the reality of it. And that's what we need to do. But who's going who gonna, to who gonna jump to the plate for us to make one another better? That's why we do this. That's why Ron do this. That's why Shonda do this. We are in the front line. But instead, what we do, we get criticized. They say we want to keep, they might say we want to keep somebody's money. Now we say they're part, we, we part of uh, uh, Mason. and uh, That's all people got to say. They always want to criticize. But we're trying to find solutions. We don't know everything. I can admit, we don't. If we use ourselves collectively towards the betterment of our nation, guess what? The name of the most ought to be magnified. I want to make a point to um, this question really quickly that was asked. Okay, so what is the solution then? Um, we can identify the problems, so we never have concrete ABCs of what to do next. That's not true. Um, the thing about it is that it's where we're putting our attention and our focus on. Oftentimes we're putting our attention on Netflix or Hulu or the latest controversy going on on YouTube with some celebrity, but collectively as a people, we're not putting our attention on what is the, going on in the so-called black community, the black plight. We're arguing about identity politics rather than unifying and having these discussions but there are groups and pockets of us, the remnant of us, as Brother Lorvin said, that are working towards means and accessibility for us to plan strategically for moving to the continent or even thriving in our personal Goshens until we can move to the continent. One of the reasons why it is that we're coming together on March 24th is to discuss strategic plans so that we as a people through Kingdom Harbor Ministry, Harbor, Harbinger Ministries, we're discussing our strategic plans or how it is that we can prosper and thrive as we are preparing so that we're not ignorant because preparation is key. The Most High said in his word that it is the kingdom of heaven is given to those who are prepared. And that's one of the things that we have to understand is that we're called to be disciples. Disciples means that you can't be lazy. You can't be mentally, spiritually, emotionally, physically. You cannot be lazy. You have to get your mind right in order with the things of Yah in order to hear from the general. If you're not showing up, you can't hear from the general. But you all are here today. You're showing up. You're hearing the truth. You're learning about your history so that it is something that you can access for when you're moving forward in your future. Now, I can't tell you which organization to support. I know right now we have phenomenal people right here on this panel. Brother Ron Dalton, Brother Lorvins, we have Journey with us here that is in 
the comment section. Shout out to Journey With Us. We have T3 and Me. We have Stepping Stones to Home. We have organizations that are paving the way right now on the continent, okay? Quest to Unite Africa that is building relationships. We have organizations that are working strategically to give us relations with the continents, our continental brothers and sisters. So please, please do not deceive yourself into believing that there's no solutions and there's no answers. Be led of the Ruach HaKadosh. In the secret place, he will guide you into who he wants you to support and who he wants you to advocate for. But in the meantime, in between time, listen and, 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 and learn of the truth of who you are so that when you move forward, that you're doing it with wisdom and not with ignorance. And so Ron, I Ron, I know you're going to talk real quick. I just want to say something real quick. Like chosen by you it this is not against you or anything like that. Like if anybody knows me, I'm very passionate about what I say. It, what I'm trying to show us is that, and, and I'm, I apologize if you took offense to it, and that's not what it means at all. I'm not trying to do that at all. I'm just very passionate about when I speak about these things because I hate the idea of our minds being so destroyed. You see what I'm saying? And what I'm basically saying is let us all learn and be better at not always being negative. You see what I'm saying? In regards to like whether, you know, brews have this or that. We do have it. That's the reality of it. We must come together in some sense and one accord to start accomplishing things. The solutions are in the scriptures. But if you read those scriptures very carefully, a lot of it is economical. A lot of it is political. A lot of it is spiritual emotional in many different ways but it's a it, it definitely is a lot of politics in there and but we have to open our eyes just like ron always says say it has to be something tangible physical this is reality this is not make-believe stuff we live in a real life and we need real solution and the most High has given us all the solutions but we must not operate in fear we must go for it and wear the banner of the Most High because we represent his name. We can't be scared. We can't be afraid of risk. And yeah, it's not going to be easy at all. This is one of the toughest battles that we will ever face. But with the Most High, nothing is impossible. Go ahead, Ron. Um, so in, in South Africa, um, when I go, since I don't have a farm yet, when I go to the grocery store, um, I thank God that I'm here because I'm, I'm saving money here. I'm saving money here when I know when I'm in America, um, the, the grocery bill is is making me nervous. I'm, I'm sad. I'm depressed. I can't believe that I spent this much money and this is what I got in my, in my basket. And I know my bank account and I look at it and I say, wow. I said, man, we're spending so much money on, on lodging, on food on car insurance, on mortgages, on rent, on gasoline, on all these different things in America. I said, this is slavery. This is, this is a trap. And, and the, ancient, the ancient pharaoh didn't want to let us go. Now we, we can go. Even if you got to save up a whole year to get a ticket to leave, you can leave. But the issue is, 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 is let my people stay in Africa. Um, we can, most cases, get to Africa with a plane ticket and a passport, but it's the staying that's the issue for a lot of people and the surviving. So in in, two, in Africa, two things you're going to need. You're going to need to be able to have the money to sustain yourself, and you're going to have the permanent visa so that you can stay longer than 30, 90, a, a year. Without those two things, you can't stay in Africa. You can say, I got a permanent visa, and you're broke. And now you're going to be like, well, how am I supposed to feed my four kids, my wife, and me, and I'm broke, but I got a permanent visa? Well, nobody's going to feed you unless you feed yourself. So if you can't feed yourself and you don't own your own land or own your own home, you know, if you don't live off uh, solar electricity and you got to boil off of water, then you will consider going back to America and getting on that government aid because... In Africa, if you run out of money, ain't nobody gonna say, ain't nobody gonna help you. And if you don't have a, a you have all the money in the world, but if you don't have a visa, that African country is gonna say ninety days, bye bye. But when you look at the mathematics, you we gotta look at if if we want to buy say fifty acres of land, and the, and somebody said it's five hundred thousand U.S. dollars, and you say okay, me and the bruise, 
there's 400 of us and we we got the money that means that we each got one thousand two hundred and fifty dollars that we saved up and we times 400 collectively have half a million dollars the guy says okay you got the money yeah let's do it now you got your title deed to the land now you tell the brews in the 400 club you say hey guys we got the land now we need to develop it what do you want to do let's build some apartment blocks that is three four five stories so we can maximize the space of the land so we can house people and then and then also have some of that land used for farming we don't have to use we don't have, we don't have to get a zone for commercial farming but we're not trying to feed a whole country we're trying to feed our, our community and so we set aside land for development for farming land for solar farms for solar energy set aside you know land to extract water from a river or from a borehole to supply water to the community and we do all these things schools uh, a worship center community center a park you know exercise center all these things on the land that you guys now have purchased with 400 uh, shareholders that each have one thousand two hundred and fifty dollars to give this give this owner of the land or chief a half a million dollars now he may he may not want to he may not want that much money for the land he may want a fraction of that he may give you the land for free he may lease it to you whatever he does but at the end of the day we're still going to need the money to develop the land people in ghana can get land dirt cheap they can get the land gifted to them they can get citizenship but it's no it's no point if you have five acres of land in ghana but you can't do nothing with the land because you ain't got no money this is where group economics comes in and there's no amount of people that eliminate people that you have to have as a set number of people that need to be going in on, a, on land development acquisition we have to do this as a nation we have to use group economics this is the reason why we can't get ahead and this is exactly the things that i've been talking about for years on h2ntv.com and it's just it's just a coincidence that that you know i'm, I'm seeing all this stuff on hebrews Tingles, um podcast show h2 and tv and then when and then and it's strange because you know when i when i do a lot of youtube videos i don't go into serious teaching uh like benea and to and dante i don't sit i don't sit for two, three hours and just teach and and run through scriptures and ancient books and maps i don't do that a lot if you look at a lot of my stuff on youtube that i had in the last year or two before i got banned it was a lot of promotion of the zoom meetings that i'm doing and 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 stuff that i that i'm putting on there so when they saw after the Kyrie incident that ron dalton's channel views are getting half a million views in one week in, in a couple of days he's posting one video 400,000 views he posts another video 500,000 views what is ron saying on these videos the youtube people know oh on, on his videos ron dalton is plugging h2n tv and on h2n tv he's telling people come back to africa he has a section called coming a diaspora he's breaking down where the real land of canaan at he's telling people well, group economics this is how we can do it he's telling you this he's telling you that in africa things are things are cheaper things are easier it's more freedom he's telling you this he's telling you how to sign up to his his, his email blast list he's telling you hebrews to negos at yahoo.com email me email me he's telling you all these things the the people that the people that they run run these platforms they said no no we cannot let this guy have half a million people tuning in to what he's saying and they're also subscribing they're emailing him they're trying to do group economics they're just they're saying we want to sign up for the for the group community project let's go to africa they cannot have all these people hundreds of thousands of people tuning in around dalton every every a couple of days i'll do a post to hear what i gotta say and to and, and to do action because they know that a lot of stuff I'm, I'm saying is just it's not about this talk it's about action and they say that okay we don't want these negroes asking too many questions we don't want them figuring things out we don't want them to start putting in footwork like michael israel says and ron dalton is doing all these things and so they understand that we can shut this down and these negroes will be like well we're just going back to our regular israelite youtube channels what are they talking about esau's a white man they're talking about you know ufos are coming to get us they're talking about we're indigenous indians they're talking about we got to wait for a million dollar paycheck where we can leave this country before we go broke or russia or china invade or the dollar bill collapses because of bricks or there's another pandemic that locks us all down that's all types of stuff that they're saying but they're not giving them solutions and footwork and this is the stuff that i'll be that i'm, that I'm currently saying right now and 
and I'm, and I'm actually got I got two zooms I'm doing next weekend. If you want to be in in this project where we can get land, not just South Africa, other countries, we got connections in a lot of different countries, brews that are continental Africans, brews that are there, that are from America. All we had to do is gain trust, put our money together, and do this. And so this is why I always I'm always saying, email me at Hebrews to two Negroes at yahoo.com if you want to be on these zooms you want to be part of these 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 uh programs because because we can't sit back and complain and say sms look at what's happening this country is being given over to other nations the chinese is coming through the border the russians the syrians the iranians iranians kyrgyzstan pakistan the latinos everybody is, has a free for all coming to this country they're getting all types of free aid free housing free money free voting free license registration Signed up to find to be uh, veterans, citizenship. They're getting all these perks in America thanks to the Biden administration, and black people aren't getting anything. We're being left out. Meanwhile, we're struggling. So there is a solution. The solution, it, it may be scary, but people have to start now, start thinking, are we better off here in America, or do we should we start leaving? And if we leave, how do we leave? When we leave, we have to leave as a community. We have to work as a community. Because the thing, at the, at the end of the day, we cannot just leave and always go to our prospective countries in cities and towns in, in Africa and say, I want to build a gigantic house in Africa with a nice pool, with a rooftop uh, a rooftop area where I can chill. I'm going to have a wall around it. And then outside, it's it's just dirt roads, it's tore up. And you're like, where are your, your Hebrew neighbors? Where are your, your comrades? Where is your community there? Oh, that's just me here. I mean, everybody over here, I, I really don't know them, man. They're, they're just, they're, they're locals. They say hi and this and that. But the, but when you don't have a community, nobody cares about the roads. When you have a community, nobody's, nobody's going to say, let's chip in and build a farm on this community. Nobody's going to say, let's build a community center, a worship center. Let's build some stores. Let's build this. If you're not a community, each person is not going to care. They're going to say, listen, you got your borehole. I got my borehole. You got your solar panels on top of your roof. It's your house. And your house is gated. You got, you, got, you got electric fence. You got wires. I do, too. I said, so I'm doing fine over here. You do you. I'm doing me. I don't care about these jank, these these terrible roads that's jacking up my car. I don't care about we have a farm. I keep going to the grocery store because because I'm doing me, you do you. No community. When we go to Africa, we can't act like that. This is this is the reason why there's so many diasporas in different countries, in 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 South Africa, Africa, and we're all just trying to trying to survive. We're all trying to survive. And you say, well, if you guys celebrating the Shabbat. You guys doing this? Well, we don't have community. This guy over here, he, he says Ron Dalton is crazy. This guy just says Ron Dalton believes in Christ in the New Testament. You don't want to deal with him. Ron Dalton doesn't say Yeshia. Ron Dalton believes that Gentiles can be saved. You don't want to deal with this guy over here. Who wants to deal with this guy? This guy says these people are Israelites and they're Hamites in our book. So there's all types of confusion that's keeping us from coming together. And when I do these meetings, the main thing people say is who we don't have the money for that. Who has who has the money to buy? Uh, a five hundred thousand dollar property, a two hundred thousand dollar property. Who has that kind of money? I said, well, with simple mathematics and, and members, we can get it, and you will only have to chip in a thousand dollars, maybe even less than that. And then they say, well, where's the money going to go into? Whose bank account? Who's going to be the secretary? Who's going to be over the, over the over the account? Is it a trust account? Is it an escrow account? Who's going to be the director? Who's going to be the board of directors? Who's going to be the one that's going to be the incorporator? What's the, what's going to what's going to be the name of the business? Where is the land going to be at? Is it in South Africa? Where? Is it in Johannesburg? Is it in Pomalanga? Is it in Cape Town? Is it, is it in Pretoria? Is it in Durban? Why not Congo? Why not Tanzania? Why not Kenya? What? Well, there's a lot of things we can't do, but we just have to start putting in action. Start attending the Zoom meetings. Start talking. Start saying who's interested and who's not. Because if you're not interested, you don't have the money. All you got to do is complain. Then we won't invite you. Like when I do the Zooms, you won't be approved to join the, the Zoom. Because if you comment onto the Zooms and you just in the chat just asking negative questions and putting in doubt into people's minds and just stay in America. Don't do nothing. Just stay in America. Just keep your money. Keep going to Kroger's, Publix, Food Lion, picking any, all these places and spending all your money. But can't, can't afford your house, can't afford the rent, can't afford the car insurance, can't afford bills, can't afford internet, can't afford this, can't afford that. And you can go continue to play until the dollar crashes and you and you should have thought about community. Because at the end of the day, this is, this is what Africa has to realize. These countries... If, if we start coming to these countries and doing community and erecting, developing land for housing, for industry, commercial, farming, 
and they see that the diaspora is serious about coming back home and they're and they're working together to do this in in certain countries they can they can they can say well we need to establish some laws so that we can start to uh, make it easier for them to transition and get permanent visas here if they don't want to do that because united nation charters is keeping a, a, a grip on their necks so that they can't do that then in all the communities that we have let's say we have a community in the drc we got a community in the rc right across right across the water in brazzaville in point north in luanda say we got one in uganda say we got one in tanzania we can we can be all we can all have these connections to communities we got these apartment blocks we got these single homes we got farms we got community centers we got we got we got uh respite centers uh slash homeless centers for those coming that really don't have a lot of money but they still want to they still want to stay in africa and they want to see how they can survive and all this stuff and, and try to work on their visas we can do us but the thing is if they say hey 90 days you got to go okay see you later we're crossing the border from drc to rc they say hey 90 days you got to go okay i'll see you later i'm going to angola uh oh okay i'll see you later okay i'm leaving uganda i'm going to tanzania okay see, 90 days okay you got to go see you, okay we're, we're going here at the end of the day yes it's gonna it may cost money to to travel on a car across the border or it may cost money to catch a flight across the border to another country but at the end of the day they're gonna have to realize like we cannot keep doing this these african americans they're gonna it's gonna start catching the world like these african americans are serious they're trying to come back home they're trying to stay here they're trying to build a life here they have land they develop their land they have housing that they own they built it with their own money they own the housing they own the farms they own the solar panels they have their own electricity they have their own water they have their own constitution they have this they have that they're essentially living on the land surviving but yet we got these 90-day visa laws that's keeping them in in fear that they got to leave why don't we do something they're not going to they're not going to uh deport us to america say so you guys gotta go like they do with the with the african hebrew Israelites in demona israel they're not gonna do that because they do that it's gonna it's gonna make them look bad in the world news now here's the thing the the indians that came here from the british um from india as indentured servitudes they have this thing called the overseas citizenship of india card it's called the oci card and if they can prove that with birth certificates and whatever that their ancestors come from india like their great, great grandparents great grandparents then they can get this oci car which allows them to travel to india to live in india however long they, it's like a lifelong visa they can live in india however long they want they can they can leave india go to south africa go back to india they can do this multiple times unlimited they can get a business in India. They can buy a house and land in India. They can trade in India. All they got to do is have this OCI card and the proof that their ancestry comes from India. The same thing how our ancestry comes from Africa, and we can prove it with a DNA test, or we can just prove it just simply on our birth certificate because it's going to say African American or Negro, that we are descendants of Africa and this is our homeland. And whether we have to give the land, they give us the land, we buy the land. The land belongs to us and then and if we own the land if the land is ours then we can survive on the land with farming water solutions uh, energy solutions housing solutions schooling solutions health solutions security solutions uh, all these things we just have to stop sitting back complaining in america and saying we don't have the money we don't trust anybody. There's no Israelites doing it. Nobody has any solution. Well, I'm giving you solutions right now. And the only the only barrier, the only barriers that people might come up with right now is, is money and maybe the visa. But these things are being worked out um, as we speak in certain countries. Um, and this is this is where I've been doing a lot of research and legwork to see how we can get around it because there's there's going to come a time in America. Uh, I already see it because that's what I left a long time ago. That people are not going to be able to afford to pay their bills, to feed themselves three meals a day. They're going to eat one meal a day. They're going to scale back on, on what they buy at the grocery store because they just can't afford it. They're going to cut the internet. They're going to cut their streaming apps. They're going to cut, you know, the amount of times they leave the house and use gas. They're going to they're going to they're going to they're going to re voluntarily repossess or turn in their vehicle. They're going to start catching rides. They're going to start they're living co living in the same house, living in a room. You got somebody else leaving your room. People are going to start having to do these things in order to survive because the government ain't going to help you. Your paycheck ain't getting, ain't getting ain't getting higher. 
And, and with the um, influx of migrants coming into the country, if they can get a driver's license, they can Uber, they can get a vehicle. Trust me, when I was in Orlando in Tampa, every time I asked for an Uber, it was 90% of the time it was it was a Latino or Hispanic. And most of the times they didn't even speak English. One, some people I had to call my friends in America in Africa that speak Spanish and Portuguese to just tell them what I wanted to talk to them about. So I'm getting in a car with somebody that doesn't even speak no English in, in Florida, and they're driving Uber, navigating me to my destination, and I have to use an interpreter while the follow saying, hey, can you tell this guy what I need? Because he doesn't understand English. This this is gonna get worse with the migrant issue, the migrant problem, 12,000 immigrants from all over coming into Africa. I mean, coming into America daily, whether they're from Sudan, whether they're from Nicaragua, Colombia, Russia, China, Pakistan, Senegal, people speaking French, different languages, taking jobs because now they now they get now have access to the same stuff that Americans got access to, and it's easier to work to have a business and you pay these people to work under the table, you pay them to wash dishes under the table. You pay them to sweep the floor, to take out the trash. You pay them to do these things on the table. Who doesn't, as a business, want to have cheap labor? This is all, all stuff coming out of the pipeline for America. And, and if the and the BRICS comes out with their own currency, like their own paper currency or whatever you want to call it, digital currency, America is going to have it's America, the, the dollar bill is going to start to decline. And when you want to use your dollar bill in Africa and have that one, one to 20, one to eight, one to 10 conversion, power rate that the dollar has right now they're gonna say no it's one to one baby it's one to one here your, your dollar is the same, on the same level as the, as the cd as the naira as the shilling as the rand it's the same level so you can't get you can't win anymore in africa your money can't get you all this land in africa you're just like you're you're like us now you're starting at the bottom with us now you know so these these this is a time that we got to get out and if anybody didn't pay attention to the movie leave the world behind the beginning of the movie, they showed you the white lion freighter ship. Biggest day. People sat there on the beach chairs, and they didn't move until the ship was on the beach. That's that's how that shows you people are just dumbed down. They're just like, huh? Well, what is the ship? Oh, it's on the beach now. Let's run. Then they showed you on the radio station 1619. Then they showed you Julia Roberts at the grocery store, and the grocery store was in a city called Point Comfort. Point Comfort is the same city and town that the first slaves in 1619 were dropped off at from the kingdom of the congo then they showed they showed you so many subliminal signs that point to slavery 1619 400 years uh virginia james they showed you all this and leave the world behind and barack obama and michelle obama was the ones that that were producers of this movie brock when you never become president you get access to the secret book the secret files ufo files you have access to all these things so Obama and these guys, you know, they're black and they understand very well that this country was built on the backs of black Americans. And, and instead of saying leave America behind, they're saying leave the world behind. But we know that the, that the movie was talking about America and what's happening in the movie is a cyber attack. The electricity is out. Telecommunications, your Internet is out. Your phone is not working. The grocery store, maybe you can go to the grocery store to the grocery store and says We're, we don't have no more food left. We're done. Because we, we have no electricity at the grocery store. The grocery store, they can have backup electricity, all that stuff. But at the end of the day, when there's complete chaos and riot, rioting and looting, grocery stores in, in Detroit, the ones owned by the Arabs, they're going to get those, those steel doors and they're going to pull them all the way down. And they're going to put a lock on it, a chain. They're going to drive to the, to the mansions where they have like five refrigerators in their garage and they got everything stocked up. And they're going to just sit there and chill until... Black people just kill themselves trying to rob each other. And these kind of things that's coming in America, we have to understand that America is not going to be this place of peace, rest, and safety that the Bible speaks of in Ezekiel 38, Ezekiel 36, and all this stuff. So we have to start understanding who we are, who they are, understanding how we fit into the prophecy, understanding there is solutions, but solutions uh, has to be in regards to unity because the Bible says, the dry bones says that uh, our bones are withered, uh, our hope is lost and we are cut off or divided from our parts. The dry bone says this. They, they say this. They say that our hope is lost. We are divided or cut off from our ports, meaning that, you know, the, the, the humerus is over here, the radius and the owner is over here, 
the skull is over here, the hip is over here, the vertebrae is over here, the femur and the tibia and the fibula is over here. So we're not together as a skeleton. We're divided. This has in our hope is lost, which a lot of people, black, black Americans they need to admit that a lot of times your hope you you, you're, you you don't have a lot of hope right now because you're always doubting all the time. There's no faith, and faith without works is dead. Then it says our bones are withered and dry. So we have to understand that, that the dry bones that are withered, dry bones, they have to have the, the, the spirit of truth. The Ruach is the spirit of truth. That has to be blown into the people. The spirit of the truth, spirit of truth, which is the Holy Spirit, has to wake up the people, has to, has to unify the people because two sticks becoming one, two sticks becoming one is unity. If we do anything individualized in America or Africa, it's not gonna it's not gonna pan out good for us. So Amen. unity is the solution. Unity is the solution. And one of the reasons why I'm passionate about this discussion is because during the pandemic, um, I've told the story many times before. My family and I were two weeks away from buying our first home, but it was at the very beginning stages of the pandemic that the most high disrupted every plan that we thought that we were preparing for and told us to leave America. He uprooted us. And I have not been in America for the last four years. I have no desire to go back to live in America at all. Um, I see the writing on the wall. And when I see that the Most High is speaking to brothers and sisters throughout the diaspora and putting in their heart the necessity for us to understand where our true land is and understand also and make preparations for returning to the continent, I see that we as a people need to adhere to what the Ruach is saying. Now, I am fully aware that the Most High is not calling everybody at this time. There is going to be a worldwide second exodus, according to Ezekiel chapter 20, as well as Revelation chapter 12. We are fully aware of that, and no one is speaking against the um, supernatural hand of deliverance that the Most High has. But he has always sent ambassadors. He has always sent pioneers ahead of time to prepare the places for Yasharel. He sent Moses to the wilderness before he had him go back to Egypt to gather the people to go into the wilderness. And he was there for 40 years. So we have to understand that he's moving and operating in this entire world in different ways. Again, when we meet on March 24th, we're going to be talking about preparing your Goshen. If the Most High is not calling you to go to the continent at this time, you still need to be prepared for what is to come. So it is not to just ignore or to leave out those people who are not called to leave America at this time. We all need to be prepared. But the only way you're going to know where you're supposed to be is if you find yourself in the secret place of the Most High, there abiding under the shadow of the Almighty. He will give you the direction for where you're supposed to go. And for those of you who is calling, it's time to get on the bus of preparation and listen to the leaders who is calling as Brother Ron Dalton is one of them, journey with us again, Quest to United Africa, all of these people that the Most High has already called to the land and making preparation for his people. Um, I want to give Brother Lorvin the opportunity to read some scripture, and then we're going to be getting ready to wrap things up in a minute. Uh, but Brother Lorvin, I'm going to turn it over to you, and then we're going to go ahead and work on final comments. Appreciate it, sis. Now, when I speak, I speak on the idea that all should understand is always by the Ruach of the Most High that we are moved. It's always that, okay? It is always that. I'm talking about every, each individual Israelite and those that believe it is always the Ruach first. Okay. Let's not put that aside. Um, and the Mosai is the one that's going to deliver all of his people. The question is, is how though? It's we, we, we always try to figure out how these things are going to be. Okay. That's foremost in terms of the economic uh, sis, go ahead and pull up this scripture real quick, uh, Deuteronomy 28. When I know we go to Deuteronomy because it is a powerful chapter. Thanks to the Most High for having it in there. So I want you to go to that real quick. Let will show something real quick. Okay, we're going to read Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 1. Blow it up a little bit. Okay, blow it up. All right. Yeah. Now, keep in mind, the Most High, he said he's going to put his word in our heart. And I know a lot of times we have to read the scripture exactly word for word for people to sometimes even understand what we're even talking about. A lot of times I don't pull up scripture because I'm just talking. But keep in mind, you should be, if you read scripture, you should know when someone is referencing scripture, even when it's not word for word, because everything is in context. All right. Uh, go ahead and read it, sis. Okay, Deuteronomy 28, verse 1 says, And it shall come to pass that thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of Yahuwah thy Elohim, 
to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that Yahuwah Elohim will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. Okay, now this is talking about the Most High literally telling you, I need y'all to listen to what I'm saying. I need y'all to listen to every single word that I say in these scriptures. When you start to do these things, I'm going to give you understanding. I'm going to give you knowledge, but you got to listen to what I'm saying. And I will set thee on high above all nations. Click the tools and let's see what high means. And the and the blue letter that says tools next to it. Yes. Go to high, the Hebrew word for that. Okay, here we are, 59.45. Mm -hmm. Scroll down some more. Okay, a Davidic king exalted above monarchs. That could be one, right? Name of Yahuwah, all rulers, either monarchs or angels or princes, right? He's saying he can set you above high, above all nations, ruler. You're, you're really the, the priest of the Most High. We're like rulers. We're here to rule. But we rule in righteousness. But who's ruling now? There is someone ruling. We that's why Ron said we must know who we're dealing with, what nation, who's doing what, who's coming against us. We have to know these things. These are knowledge. We are destroyed because of lack of knowledge. When we don't have the knowledge, then we don't know. It's like a blind man walking. We have no idea what's going on, right? So now go to um. Go to uh, the next one, which is 2843. Okay, that passage reads in Deuteronomy 28, verse 43. The stranger that is within thee shall get up above thee very high, and thou shalt come down very low. The stranger within thee. That means here we are in America, because this is where it's talking about who's going to be scattered. You have East Indians, you have Arabs, Chinese, Japanese, it don't matter who it is, uh, whether it's the Jewish people, they come amongst us within the, in our neighborhoods, and it says they're going to get up high, we're going to be low. Isn't that what's going on? That's exactly what's going on. Anybody can be in our neighborhood, where, where they could be the, the Mexicans or whoever, when they move in our neighborhood, guess what? They set up shop. And all of a sudden, it's an influx of them, and they start doing group economics, right? And then what we do, we go patronize them. We stay low. They get on high. They move in that nice little fancy neighborhood, and they're living good. The scripture is so real. But when you read 28.1, the first part, he said, if you listen to me, then you're going to be on high. But we didn't listen. Guess what? We was on low. And then it goes, if you go to 52, it tells you the things that it's talking about us being low and high. It's giving you examples. And he shall besiege thee in all thy gates until thy high and fenced walls come down wherein thou trustest throughout all thy land. And he shall besiege thee in all thy gates throughout all thy land, which Yahuwah Elohim have given thee. I'm 51 as well. Sorry. It's okay. And he shall eat the fruit of thy cattle. Cattle. Of thy land, land. Until thou be is destroyed, which mm -hmm. also shall not leave thee either corn, wine, or oil, or the increase of thine kind, or flocks of thy sheep, until he hath destroyed thee. These are all economics. These are all substances that we have no access to because we did not listen to him. First of all, we're not in a land. We're not in our land. If this is the land you feel like we're from, go ahead, enjoy it. But the Ruach tells me, based on what I read, this is not where I'm from. This is the land of our captivity. Now the truth shall set us free. Because now I'm reading truth. Truth has told me that wherever I'm at, in my neighborhood, the stranger is going to come and they'll be higher than us. Guess what? That is true. But the truth is also telling me, and the Ruach is leading me to believe that the Mosai is going to come and deliver his people. But how? Through truth, through his word. And when I read the word, it says, deliver thyself, O Zion, thou that dwellest in the daughter of Zion. Zechariah 2, 7. So may, I'm hearing it. 
I'm not going to speak for anybody else. But what I'm seeing here is that we are destroyed for lack of knowledge and we need to make sure that we read the scripture as best as we can and have understanding. And when you don't understand, you wait for it. You wait for it. Maybe he'll send somebody. Noah spent 120 years telling people, yo, you better get up. You better get up and listen to what I'm saying. 120 years. And guess what? They went in the ark and everybody else was taken. So could it be? It says in the last days, it should be like the days of Noah. <laughs> So that means there's going to be some people crying out saying, hey, y'all need to heed to certain things. But you won't know what to heed to because you're not reading the scripture so the Ruach can lead you. So you won't even know when he sent his messenger to you. Could Ron be a messenger? Could Ashonda? Could I be? Could all the different people, the Teos, the Dantes, the Yoshiyahu? The Dr. Uh, uh, Kenneth, Ken, Dr. Kenneth Howard, IOG, IUIC, all these different groups. How do you decipher who's telling you the truth? How do you decipher who has the Ruach if you don't read this word, man? You got to read the word and you're going to know who have the passion of the most, who have the heart of the most high. <laughs> A lot of people are going to lead you. They're going to ask for money, but guess what? They ain't going to do nothing with it. A lot of people are going to teach you things that has nothing to do with your everyday living. That is not practical that you can't even use. He said, I will send you saviors. I will deliver you. But how is he going to deliver you? Man, he's going to send you people that's walking this thing out. Not people just, just talking. People that's literally sacrificing their family and their life. You say you're going to forsake all things. You got to forsake everything. Leave everything behind. That is what we're aspiring to do. I don't care about fancy this, fancy that, this, that. Yeah, I live in America, but guess what? The most is going to use me in due time and for me to act. And we must all act accordingly and stop all the bad reports. Caleb and Joshua, you see what happened? You see what happened? They didn't, you're right. They didn't trust Noah. And I know a lot of people don't trust Ron. Why? Because a lot of people talk crap about him. So you're going to be reluctant to do anything. Why? Because a lot of us are no different than the people who was talking junk about Noah. A lot of us is no different than the people who was talking against Yahushua. A lot of us is no different, but we don't see the scriptures living. All of us who are influencers in this community, whether it be the Teos, whether it be the Benaiah Israel, whether it be uh, We Woke Now, whether it be all these different, they have these major platforms, there's no reason why we can't come together in a room to decide what we need to do for our people. A lot of people are struggling, not just physically, but spiritually. A lot of people need healing. This war is spiritual, but the spiritual, I must be able to see it in the physical. Don't tell me spiritual things if you've not proven nothing physically. How am I supposed to believe your report when you don't have a testimony? How am I? Come on, man, like we got to do way better as a nation and all us leaders. Yeah, you may know something a little different than the other person. Maybe it's skewed a little, but is it salvific in nature? Come on, man, we, we got to do better. We say we leaders, but when it comes down to being leaders, we argue with one another. It's stupid. All because this person don't believe in this type of DNA or this person believe the land is Israel here. Okay, well, well, big deal. Is that salvation? Is that got anything to do with salvation? In the, long, in the grand scheme of things, when I'm talking about salvation, eternal life, not everybody's going to do the same thing. I understand that, but we have. We have the solution. It's in scripture. But if we bring our heads together, we can figure out something. We can start to figure out something. And we should not. And I won't ever give myself glory for anything that is decided. We got to give the most high glory. That is the end result. The most high wants his name to be known throughout the all earth. But guess what? If he's going to be our, our Elohim, we got to start acting like we his people. And not be afraid of nothing, not be afraid to lose our life. 
for this cause. So since I rest my case on that, I just wanted to show people that this is about economics. This is about our spirituality. This is, is about emotion. This is about everything that encompasses the characteristic of the most high. But it starts with substance. When they leave, they shall leave with what? Great substance. It's all economics at the, at the end of these economics. Indeed. So yeah, I rest on that. Thank you so much. So profound. And it is all about economics. And I want to uh, highlight this comment here. So many chiefs and too few Indians. I mean, I'm going to be honest with you, Phantom Warrior. I I'd rather be an Indian any day of the week. Um, it's exhausting having a platform. It's exhausting speaking um, spiritually because we get pulled on. Um, and oftentimes we get misunderstood. And the warfare is deep. But we are all called to be in the offices in which the Most High has called us to be in. And the main thing in which Brother Lorcan just spoke about was the obedience of the Most High. We have to be obedient in whatever office that he called us to be. He is really the chief. And we really are the Indians following after him. We are the body. He is the head. So if we could all operate as a body is supposed to and work collectively together, then we can be where it is that we are called to be, which is in the center of his will. Brother Ron, I want to give you an opportunity to share some final comments. Thank you so much for just gracing us on this platform with your wisdom, your expertise, your time. And um, with that in mind, I'd love for you to give some co final comments. And then Brother Lorvins, if you have final comments to share, I would love to hear yours as well. Um, if uh, first, first, I want to um, say that if you enjoy today's teaching or discussion and you're like man i wish i was still on youtube well you can thank you know who for banning me from youtube but um all my content uh is on h2n tv.com worldwide and hebrews to negroes tv.com worldwide so you don't have to say well i'm in africa and i don't have a vpn i can't get your movie on amazon because Amazon, they, I can't, I can't purchase it in this country. They won't deliver the DVD to Nigeria, South Africa. How can I see the movie? And I keep telling them, I say worldwide, Amazon does not want you guys to see this stuff. Uh, you know, in South Africa, there are stuff on Netflix here in South Africa that is not on Netflix in America. There are stuff on Netflix in America. When I come here and I look at the South African Netflix. It's not there. I'm like, what's going on here? So there is even Amazon. So there is a way that they're sheltering and hiding this information. And and this is why, you know, I've put everything on those on these two platforms. And and people can reach me at Hebrews, T O Negroes, N E G R O E S at Yahoo.com. A, a lot of um, what's happening is a lot of miseducation of our people. And we have all types of so-called leaders. You know, your Dr. Umar Johnson, your Tubik Nashi, your brother Polite, brother Ben X, your your uh, Riza Islam, your Shaka Bars. You know, you got you know different Israelite camp leaders, Israelite assembly leaders, um, Pan-Africanist philosophers in Africa, and I've tried to organize uh, a leader, a leader conference, a leader discussion, a Zoom with all the leaders uh, addressing certain uh, topics and, and problems in our community and the solutions. Um, you know, because people are saying different things. They're saying that we've always been here. Our ancestors were already here. Those ain't your people over there. Who told you those people in Africa are those your people? in Ghana, in Nigeria, in South Africa. Who told you those are people? They tell you that the UFOs are coming to save you, to take you to the promised land. They're telling you those are Hamites. You know, they're not your people. Those are Hamites. It's the land of Ham. They're, these Bantu people, they're not you. You're you are Negro. They're, they're Africans. The Negro and the African are two different people. But yet, we know that there's no man in the Bible named Africa that had children called Africans. You know, so stop using that term. You know, this, these are crazy things that we're dealing with. And a lot of a lot of platforms, and I'm not trying to harp on people, you know, 
we we do a lot of teaching, you know, but we don't offer a lot of solutions. We give people hope, like in the Christian church, but we don't often give tangible solutions. So we may look at your, you know, truth unveiled and, and truth unedited and all these platforms, and we keep hearing the the negative things that's happening in America, in the world, and what what next thing is coming. AI is going to replace jobs. Pandemics is coming. The, the great American eclipse is coming. The BRICS is going to collapse the American dollar. All this stuff. But, we, but what is the solutions at? What, 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 why don't we have discussions as leaders to see what makes sense? What should we be what should we be directing our people? But a lot of these leaders don't want to talk to Ron Dog. They don't want to talk to me. I'll try. And when, we, and when you have this, when you have to have a discussion, which when you have two people that have opposing views in a discussion, it's a debate. But nobody wants to debate. Nobody wants to have a discussion on live TV, on YouTube. They avoid these things. I've, I've been here in South Africa on different radio stations, and people are saying that the Bantu people, we predate Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And I say, how long have we been here? And they'll say, in, from, the, from the beginning of time, the Bantu people were here. So I say, oh my, well, so Adam was a Bantu? You know, like, yes. Or they say, well, the Bantu people had civilizations, 10,000 BC, older than the ancient Egyptians, older than the Sumerians. And I, and I break down, what is, I say, let's, let's just break down the definition of a civilization, of a civ, what a civilization has. You're saying the Bantu people predate the Hebrews, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and they date back to 10,000 BC? Brother, you don't really want to try to prove this with tangible facts in reality because you're going to lose. And no matter how many people I talk to, they talk about the ancestors. We need to call upon the ancestors. We need to uh, ask them for advice. There's no intermediary between God and man except for the ancestors. Christ, who is that man? He's a fake man. Who are you talking about? You know, these people are people are believing that the old ways, the African spirituality, worshiping the creator and the gods and multiple gods, consulting with the ancestors like necromancy, trying to get them to give us give us an answer like King Saul and the witch of Endor and Samuel and all these things. It's like this, these things are, are still relevant. We need to still be doing these things when these things never worked for us and God told us back in the day to not do these things. So when I when I when I'm on these radio stations and they're battling me left and right saying we're ancient Egyptians, we're this, we're that, and I say, you know what? I say I challenge any African spiritualist, Sangoma, medicine man, voodoo man, expert, uh Christian pastor, Muslim imam, a Jewish rabbi, I don't care who he is. I, I will debate him on any platform in South Africa, live in person, wherever, wherever the time is, like Green Eggs and Ham, I don't care where it's at, bring him to me, let's debate. And and and, and I say my emails, he rules to he goes at yahoo.com. You know how to reach me. Email stays quiet, phone call stays quiet. Same thing in America. I said the same sex, the same exact same stuff. Christian pastors talking all types of talk. He rules like, you know, Muslims, whoever, Jewish rabbis say, oh, they don't like, like put your money up. You know, I mean, even one time in Corpus, I, I I think I'm I said I'll pay a thousand dollars to any any Jewish rabbi, any any well-known Jewish scholar that can prove to me that their people were the people that migrated out of Egypt with Moses, meaning meaning the sect of Jewry we have today that dominates 90 percent of Jewry. Prove to me. I said, let's, let's do this. Email stays quiet, phone stays quiet. Nobody has any heat for Ron Dalton. And the thing is, what I realized is that. All these platforms, whether you have 200,000, 400,000, 500,000, 1 million, they don't want to have them and me on the same screen discussing content, discussing problems and solutions and all these things. Because then people don't want to confront the truth. Because when people really get the truth, then their spirit is going to say, this makes sense. Ron is, they're saying that the Chinese and the Asians are Moab and Ammon, and Ron is saying this. They're saying the UFO mothership is coming to get us, and Ron is saying this. They're saying that 
America is the promised land. Iran is breaking up the facts on this. They're saying that we are indigenous to America. Iran is saying this. They're saying that the land of Canaan, they're saying the land of, of Canaan is, is this little small piece of land up there. Iran is saying this. But they don't want people in their circle to see these things. And they start scratching their head and say, man, I said, I'm using critical thinking and logic. And everything he's saying, is, is, it makes sense and it's, it's reality. But the twisting of the scriptures, it's been led me to believe all these things. And so I'm confused. I'm, I, don't understand, I don't really understand Bible prophecy because I don't, I'm getting taught wrong. Well, one of the things I'm going to leave you with, and I'm, I'm going to be done. In the Bible, in Exodus chapter 26, verse 14, in the Greek subchildren, the tabernacle or the tent of meeting was where the Israelites had to keep the Ark of the Covenant, the table for showbread, the gold menorah, the altar. They had to keep all the stuff inside a makeshift enclosure. That's called the tabernacle. It was a it was a tent of many layers. And whenever they would move from one place to the next, they had to break it down and they had to wrap up the ark, wrap up the menorah, wrap up the, the altar so that when they when they move with it, that it stay protected from the elements, from rain and stuff. And just like the ephod, the, the 12 stones that Aaron uh, and the high priest had to wear, and God told them what, what stones to get to put on the ephod. And these stones are not in Saudi Arabia. These stones are not in the San Peninsula. These stones are in Africa. He told them for the outer layer, the, for the tabernacle, in verse 14, it says, And thou shalt make for a covering of the tabernacle rams skins dyed red and blue skins as coverings above or on the outer layer. But the but in the Greek Septuagint, it does not say in English, in the English translation, it does not say, okay, it says blue skins above on the outer layer. Well, what we know that the color is blue, but what is the actual skins? What is the actual skins that's being used? When you go and translate what is written in Greek, because I can't read Greek, you go ahead and copy it, paste it in Google Translate. It's going to say, and you shall make a covering for the tent of round skins dyed red and the coverings of hyacinth skins above. Now, you say, now, I looked at this and I said, what is, high, what is a hyacinth? And what are hyacinth skins? So I said, the Gentiles are tricky. They're clever, but we're smarter than the Gentiles. So I went ahead and Googled hyacinth. Hyacinth is spelled H-Y-A-C-I-N-T-H. And I said, highest, highest synth skins. So maybe this is an animal. So I Google it and I say the hyacinth is a plant. It's a plant that lives in freshwater banks and rivers. It's not a plant that lives in the salty, saltwater Mediterranean Sea, the Atlantic Ocean, the Red Sea. This is a freshwater plant. It's a plant that many times the manatee, the manatee lives and eats. He lives around these, these plants that float in the water and he eats these things. So I looked at some other um, translations of the Greeks of Turgeon of Exodus 26, 14, and it says sea cow. It says sea cow. It doesn't say hyacinth skins because we know a flower doesn't have skins. A hyacinth is a plant. It doesn't have skins. So why would the Greeks of Turgeon put hyacinth skins? They're being sloppy. They're, they're trying to trick us. But this tricks us for kids. We're not kids. We're adults. So when you look at a sea cow, or a manatee. You say a sea cow and manatee's skins are very thick. And to have the outer layer of the tabernacle, you would think that the Bible and God does not want the Ark of the Covenant to be rained on when you have the outer layer. Imagine having just a simple sheet over the outer layer and it rains really hard and the Ark of the Covenant is underneath the tent and all this water is seeping through the sheet hitting the Ark of the Covenant, making the floor muddy, and you have the priest in there trying to do his thing. It's a hot mess. 
So God wanted the outer layer to be withstandable from water, it'd be waterproof. Now, a, a, a sea cow or a manatee's skins is very thick, and his skins is waterproof. Why is it waterproof? Because a manatee can't sweat. It can't sweat. It stays in the water all the time. It doesn't come out the water and just start crawling, crawling the ground like a crocodile. A manatee can't sweat. It does not have sweat glands. So nothing can get in, nothing can get out. Remember when, when, when we get into a water that's salty, we stay there really long, they, our skin starts to shrivel. You know, it starts to shrivel. And somebody that is is shot and they throw him in the ocean and tie a brick around his neck and around his legs and throw him in the ocean, when you take that body out the ocean after a while, it's going to be bloated. How is it bloated, Ron Dalton? Because the water got inside. The water got inside. And so and the face is all puffy and everything. It's not going to be shriveled. It's going to be puffy. So the manatee skins, he doesn't have sweat, so this, the water can't penetrate in his skin and can't go out of his skin. What is a manatee? What do they live at? Manatees live in fresh water. They live in fresh water, rivers, and lakes, and they also can go towards the, the, the delta where the fresh water opens into the Atlantic, into, into the saltwater ocean. But here's the thing. Manatees cannot drink seawater. They can't drink salt water. Manatees, like all mammals and humans and animals, they have to drink water. You got to have water to survive. If the manatee, the sea cow, cannot drink seawater or salt water, then how in the world the Israelites were told to get the skins of a sea cow manatee while they were in the wilderness to make the outer layer of the tabernacle so that when they construct the tabernacle, they put the, the pegs into the ground, Bob, that now they have an impenetrable waterproof outer layer. When they have to break it down and they're traveling through the, through the rain, they got the Ark of the Covenant, the golden menorah, the, the table for showbread, and the altar. They got it wrapped up really nice and tight with the sea cow skins, which is waterproof. So it protects everything. So there's no rust, no erosion. And so when I looked and seen what I said, well, the manatees and the sea cows, they're, they're abundant in West Africa in Central Africa. Why are they abundant in West Africa and Central Africa? Because a lot, of, a lot of the rivers that empty into the Atlantic Ocean, these rivers go into what we call man, mangroves. And these mangroves are like rivers that lead into the interiors of Cameroon and the Congo and, and Nigeria and other areas where these manatees are just floating around, swimming very slow, eating on the freshwater hyacinth. And when I, when I Google the Red Sea, the Red Sea is the most, it's one of the hottest and the most saline, salty bodies of water in the world. So we know that reeds don't grow there. The freshwater loving hyacinth plant that the manatee eats doesn't grow there. And the manatees have to get fresh water to drink in these areas. And so the majority of these manatees and sea cows, we say, okay, well, they're in Florida. We know ancient Israel, the wilderness is not in Florida, but they're also in the West Coast in central parts of Africa. Even more, when you look at all these things that God told the Israelites that they needed to collect, they needed to get in order to make these things for the Ark of the Covenant, the shittim wood, the acacia wood, the silver and the gold. Because remember, the Ark of the Covenant was overlaid with gold. In South Africa, we found out before the white man got here, and they called it Johannesburg, which has which means gold, like city of gold. Before they got here, the Bantu people already knew how to smelt gold and make gold bracelets and gold, you know, uh, like like rhinoceros, like a, like a little monument. They already knew how to how to how to heat gold to where it it turns it turns into liquid and then to fashion it to a, a jewelry or to an ornament. They already know how to do this with their own with their own you know technology. So the Israelites knew how to get gold and to liquefy it so that they can overlay the Ark of the Covenant and the tap in these, in these different these different things, the gold menorah, the, the, the altar, to overlay it with gold if that's what, what the, was the instructions. So where is gold found in abundance? Gold is found in abundance in Africa. You can go to Ghana, you can go to Senegal, you can go to Chad where they had the coop, 
You can go to South Africa, you can go to Congo, you can go to Angola, you can go to Cameroon, you can go to many places and see that the land is filled with gold. And you don't, you don't have to dig that deep. In South Africa, they didn't have to dig deep to get to the gold. They didn't need some huge mine, mine uh, um, instrument to go down 10, 20, 30 feet to get to the gold. The gold was so, so low in the earth that all the, the white people had to do was get South Africans to get some shovels and then start digging or go into the, into the river or the lakes like they do in the Congo to extract the gold. That's it. That's all they had to do. So they had to use machines like mining machines like the Chinese is doing and the Jews are doing to extract diamonds, to extract gold, to extract copper, coltan, tin, zinc, graphite. No, they didn't have to do that back in those days. So that shows you that if in Israel, if in order to get gold, the Jews have to go outside of Israel to mine for gold, for diamonds, for silver, for all these things that the Bible says that the Israelites needed and, and had to had to have in those days to do whatever it is that God told them to do that needed these materials, these raw materials. This, these things are not seen in Saudi Arabia. They're not seen in Sinai Peninsula. They're not seen in Israel. So where is the wilderness that the Israelites were wandering around in? And they they seen giraffes, as we mentioned earlier on the show. They seen rhinoceros. They seen ostriches. They seen jackals. They seen hyenas. They seen dogs. They seen wolves. They seen all these things, lions and leopards. Come on, I mean antelopes, uh, uh, impalas, ibex, buffaloes, zebras. Come on, guys. Please, no stuff. These things are not in Israel. Elephants, ivory tusks. All these things are not in Israel. So, so either we're going to start using reality and saying, hey, if the Gentiles could trick us to not us, we not knowing who we are. Like even people in Africa, you can ask any person 40, 30, 20 years old, hey, what color is Jesus in Africa? And they're going to say he's white. You can ask any Uber driver, any Uber driver, say, what tribe are you from? They can say, Petty, Zulu, Swana, Kosa, Swati, Ndevile, Songa. They can say any tribe. They say, hey, are you Christian? Yes. I say, well, Jesus, you go to church? Jesus, yeah. Is Jesus white? He says, yes. I say, we told you that. What led you to believe that Jesus is white? You learn in the church. I say, so then are the Jews white? The Israelites? Yes, Jesus is white. I say, well, then who are you? According to the Bible. They, they draw a blank. They don't, they don't say anything. I'm like, what? Even in Ghana, I ask the same question to Christians, Eves, Krobo, Ashantis, uh, Fantis. Some of them may have known, but a lot of them didn't know. But then they're telling me that we circumcise on the eighth day. They name our child on the eighth day. We go to the mountain uh, to circumcise. We go to the mountain to pray. God lives in the mountain. We shave our head when somebody dies. We have a cleansing ceremony. Uh, these certain people in the house can't touch the dead body. It has to be a priest or elder. And when, some, when a woman has a child, she has a girl, she's twice, she's unclean twice as long as she has a, a male child. If we have a goat, we, we cast our sins on the goat. We let the goat, let the goat go. Let Just let it, let it run off into the, into the field. Or we just kill the goat and sacrifice the goat. We put our sins onto the goat. We, we place our hand on the goat. And this, this is the sacrifice of a, a, this is a zazo. This is the scapegoat sacrifice. We have a piece of land. We just leave a part, portion of the land for those that are wandering through the land, the sojourners, the, the poor, the divorced, the widowed, and they want to just get some of the get, get some of the produce in the land. We harvest our part. We leave a part for them to eat for the poor. I said, "What is that called?" They said, "Well, it's a tradition. We rest the land after seven days. What is that called?" I'll be mean, just do rest the land. We 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 harvest the land for seven years and we let it rest. And you let it rest, you don't do nothing. No, we don't do nothing. We wait till the next year. I said, "Who well, taught you that? This is this, this is the land Sabbath." There's so many things, Paul mine pouring out, pouring out drink offerings, libations, all this stuff, casting lots, all this stuff, even down to the practices that we see that, that are, 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 are idolatry, ancestor worship, sprinkling. Remember, Moses sprinkled blood on the altar and on the people before he told them the covenant. We all obey the commandments. We all agree we're going to obey the commandments. The Israelites all said after Moses sprinkled blood on them, we all going to obey the commandments. Hear ye, hear ye. We're all going to obey the commandments. Moses sprinkled blood on them. They're doing that in Africa this day. We're like, wait a minute. What are you guys doing here? But these are all things that, that Israelites were doing back in the day. Back in the day, if we were saw Moses get a, killing an animal, sprinkling blood on the altar, then kill, and then having the animal on the altar or fat on the altar, then he gets the blood in the bowl and he starts sprinkling it on the people. If we saw that back in the day, 
and, 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 and we're like now in this current time, like, oh, that's voodoo, that's voodoo. But we have to understand that the Bible is a book about the Bantu people. It's not a book about Europeans, Turkey people from Central Asia. So, so, so if they can hide our true identity from us, then what makes you think that they can't hide where the true land of Canaan is from us in anything else? Why would, we, why would we trust the Gentiles to give us the accurate history? So, so therefore, they hide who they are and they hide who we are. So we don't know who we are, and we sure. You sure are not going to know who they are. So when we read Ezekiel 38, it talks about Gomer and Magog and Tubal and Meshach and Togomoth and Persia and Cush and Put. We're like, we don't know who these people are. Who are the real Persians? Who are the real Cushites? Who are the real children of Put? Who are they? Are they people in Libya or are they in the Sahel? Are they the people in India or are they the people in Iran? Are they the people in Sudan or are they the people in, in West Africa? Are they the people in Germany and in, in Israel and in the Middle East and North Africa in Eastern Western Europe, or are they the people somewhere else? Because there's a lot of things we need to understand on who the descendants of the children of Jacob are, the children of Shem, the children of Ham, and the Israelites. And a lot of, and most people today, I can say this for a fact, is that they don't they don't have it. They don't, they got it all wrong. They got it all wrong, and they're teaching a lot of things that's wrong. And if we don't know who we are, we don't know who they are, then we how are we going to understand end times biblical prophecy? Absolutely. Absolutely. And very well said. And I think that we have to remember, like we said, when I was interviewing Quest to United Africa, that our oppressors are the ones who have taught us. And, you know, shout out to the Boreal Redirecting and Watchmen as well for their series, White It Out, because they talk about how the main people groups that are in the scriptures have been whited out. These are not the original peoples that we see in these modern lands. And so we have to be aware that so much history has to be unpacked. It has to be rediscovered. We're just hitting on the surface um, levels right now because this has been hidden for generations, for hundreds of years. So as uh, the Most High is using Brother Ron to do the research and to dig down into the information as well as critically think about what we see in front of us, Let's uh, let us just continue to lift him up in prayer. Let's continue to listen and support the work that Yah is doing through our brothers and sisters in the continent as well as in the diaspora. I'm going to give Brother Lorvin's opportunity to say his final comments, and then I will share my final comments before we close. Yeah, I appreciate it, man. This has been wonderful, and uh, Shana, of course. Uh, thank you very much for always being a willing vessel to allow the Most High to use you. In whatever cap capacity that you know you you he uh, allows you to be used so thanks a lot for that for your obedience and of course you too ron i know you ain't gonna stop because i already know you personally <laughs> and so this this is this is a battle i know this is a you're gonna do this until the most side decide to, en to end it um likewise me and for the people that are out there you have ears to hear and you have eyes to see and deception is everywhere and you must be aware that that's the case um always seek the most high through his word you see what i'm saying and be diligent about it uh, don't just be going around spiritualizing everything uh, when he proclaimed through his word all things they all became something they became something tangible we always say his words do not go void that means it has to accomplish and do something and so if we are going to be even himself, he said he sent his word here, word in the flesh where we were able to see, touch and see how it operate. It's the same thing like us. We are to be like the Mashiach. So we he say he's going to put his word in us, meaning we should be word made flesh, just like Yahusha. And these words have to go out and accomplish something. So if we are going to be his battle axe, uh, we are his priests. What are the priests? The priests they were supposed to do. They were supposed to operate in something. All his prophets, when they spoke his word, they had to go do it. All his servants. You don't just call a servant. You call a servant because you're there to serve and do something. So our job is to do something. The question is, what were you put here to do? What is your job? What is your mission? that the Ruach is going to operate in you to accomplish what it is the Most High wants to accomplish on this earth. He said he wants to dwell with his people, right? 
and we are going to be his people. But you can't be his his people without doing something for him. You, we have to sacrifice, be a living sacrifice unto this work for the Most High. It's point blank. Period. I don't know how he's going to save us. You know what I'm saying? I don't know how he's going to do these things, but I know one thing: he's going to do it. He's going to do it, and he's going to get us out of whatever captivity that we are in or we're in. Um, he is going to make us what the head again. These are his words. How he's going to do that? That's up to him. He's only going to show us as much as we're going to allow us to be able to see. But I know collectively our job is to do something because we are a priestly nation. All right. I pray that all the uh, leaders can come together in some kind of way uh, to really talk about what it is that we need to do uh, for our people through by the power of the Ruach. All right. By the power of the Ruach, not according to ourselves and anything that we do should not be for our own benefit. It should be for the benefit of the people. And when the people rise up and become a nation, therefore, the most high name will be magnified. It's just that simple. So I want to say shalom to everybody. Thank you so much, Brother Lawrence. And you are always so gracious and just an honor to have on this platform. You're doing so many incredible things out there in the community and abroad. Um, and we just appreciate you even gracing us with your time today. I know it's a little unexpected. I know it's a little, you know, got a little bit of sleep. I got that. I'm going to get some sleep when I'm done. <laughs> Y'all willing. But I want to thank you so much for coming on. Um, I had the honor and, and, and pleasure of being able to interview Pastor Rick Fletcher uh, just a few days ago. And we talked about uh, the UN and their demand for reparations to be paid by the West. And he said something very powerful. And I, and I told him I was going to share that today with you, Brother Ron, that he at one point was on the way to becoming one of the largest evangelical pastors in California. And, um, you know, rolling with the big dogs, if you will. But the Most High used Hebrews to Negroes, the book, your original work to impact him and his entire ministry and his entire life was changed because of that. And I just want you to know that the work that you're doing is impacting people around the world. It really is. And I know that, you know, you shared that even as you've done Hebrews to Negroes chapter three, uh, that you're still getting a lot of pushback, that you're getting, having to get permission from the mayor of Johannesburg now at the Soweto Theater in order for you to be able to even show it. Family, this is why we have to pray. We have to pray. Why? Because, you know, the enemy is wanting to keep the truth of Yah's word. He's wanting to keep it just muzzled and he wants to keep it banned. And so even on this platform, I'm going to be able to keep this video up for maybe about a week and I can't keep it up any longer because of the fact that they've been striking my channel, which I, oh, hate. <laughs> I hate that. I hate that. But in order for me to be able to continue to get the work done, I have to. And I'm going to leave it up for about seven days, but I'm asking you all well, to please download. Tell, please tell, yeah, tell them to download it. Tell them to download it and share it. Download and share it. Download, slice it up, all the major important points that are brought up. Please do that. We definitely need you all to do that. Um, I want to thank all of you again. For, hey, I found uh -huh. quick. If, if, I wasn't, if I wasn't on this YouTube live, would you, would you have kept it up longer or because of me? <laughs> you know it's because of you. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, because you know, this is mostly streaming on my channel too, and I think really what we need to do, to be honest, Ron, I mean, because we do have to move, you know, be wise as a serpent, you know what I'm saying, and harness as a dove in the way that we move. Instead of always just keeping videos on here, I think really, if you want your word to go out even more, I think you should do more lives. You know what I'm saying? Um, more lives because. If, if every other week or every month you're doing live with us, it would be more, it, it'll be better in a sense. Um, that way we we don't have to, we, we at least always have a platform for the word to get out. Yeah. yeah. I know, um, uh, Shonda, it seems as though in Africa, the, the YouTube videos, interviews that I've done, they have not taken them down. They have not given them strikes. Um, I did a, I did a YouTube video with a uh, YouTube channel called Something Nice with Danano. Yes. D -N -A -N -A. And, and, and although, although I only talked about 30 minutes on each video, video got over 120 
thousand views, and and it's still it's still getting views, and they have not given him a strike, they have not given him a, a, a takedown. But what he told me is that based on the analytics, the majority of the viewers are from America. So I think that that as long as this message is, I mean, America, they don't want me to do anything, but but I think if the message was to start hitting Africans, and if say like if Donato said 90% of the people that, that streamed the video were from South Africa, then I think YouTube may have intercepted and caused a, a strike or a takedown because I don't know. It's weird because because every YouTube video I've done in South Africa is still up. It's still up to this day, whether it has 100,000 views or 20,000 views or 10,000 views, it's up. But you're right. In America, depending on the, the, the algorithm, it seems as though they have a target uh, among those that I am frequently in communication with. Or frequently on the channel, such as Lorbens, Honda, and then Benet was at one time. But yeah, you know, especially you, Lorbens. Lorbens, you already showed me the multiple strikes that you got for yeah, every video that we've done, even if it's a video that has nothing to do with them or you know, the promotion for the thing, it don't matter as long as you're on it, they removed everyone. Even the, even even the, even the song, even the song Revolution. Right. right. Most wanted. I, said, I thought I was Ashonda at large. I thought I was the one that was running. No, oh no, 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 no! I'm talking about every <laughs> single video. If it's Ron's on there, it don't care. It'll, it even if it's not controversial, they remove it. It's true, and you know what? I had a great suggestion from one of my sisters and subscribers that um, I could take this interview and I could put put it on my Patreon. For those of you who want to support the Patreon platform, you can see it there. You can share it there. I can at least have it there housed because that way, hopefully, we won't run into any problems. But I will keep it up here for seven days on YouTube and download if you can. Slice it, splice it, do whatever you have the ability to do so. You won't get any copyright claims from me. But um, again, thank you all so much for coming on. Uh, we got to get this word out. And uh, the enemy is busy, but the most high is still in control. I want to do is give a shout out to those of you who have given super tests and super stickers really quickly. Shout out to Sister Judea Sons. Listen, Brother Lorvins, if you don't know who this sister is, you need to know who this sister is. Oh, yeah. She's an amazing psalmist. So good to see you, sister. She says, peace and blessings to the family and the threefold cord not easily broken. Thank you, Ashonda Ron and Lorvins. It's always good to see you, sis. Brother Eric Tinsley in the house, as always, Israel for Israel. What go on, my son? That's why talking about my brethren in Jamaica. All right. So I just want to give you a shout out. Thank you so much for coming on. Clip for possible wickedness in high places, as always. Yeah, we know there is, but we are the light of the world and the salt of the earth. So we're going to shine our light. Sister Light, super uh, six sticker of $9.99. Thank you so much for giving and thank you for being on this platform. Sister Kahalia. Ten dollars super sticker. Thank you so much for being on the platform, brother Calvin. Always supporting. Thank you so much for your extension of your membership. I appreciate you so much as always, my brother. And also for your super sticker. Thank you as well. And continue to keep brother Calvin in your prayers for his health, brother Brandon. Super sticker. Thank you so much for your nineteen ninety nine super sticker as well as sister Denia. Thank you so much for your nineteen ninety nine super sticker. We really appreciate y'all. Guess what? We can't do this without you. Without your support, we cannot. I cannot come up here and do this while you support. Brother Ron can't do what he does while you support. Brother Lorvins can't do what he does while you support. So please continue to support us because at the end of the day, we're all living this life and trying to do what Yah has commanded us to do. All right, family. Well, just to put a quick reminder, uh, I will be in New York on March 24th, 2024 at 1 p.m. I'm going to be there with Kingdom Harbinger Ministries for the Descend for Greatness March on the UN with other powerful speakers, including Divine Prospect, our lead speaker, as we talk about making preparations for our Goshen here. For those of us who are not called just yet to go to the continent, how do we prepare? How do we thrive even in this unsettling time? So if you would like to attend and you are in the New York area or around the New York area, and you'd like to come live, you can register and come live. There are about 50 seats slots that are available to attend live if not and you want to visit and you want to actually you want to participate through online means you can just register for the online 
as well. I'd love to see you all there. I have put the link in the description as well as in the chat several times. So um, hopefully we'll see y'all come in and support. Again, thank y'all so much, everyone, for just being here and doing all that you do to support all of the work that we do. And family, you know, as always, we have to remember that the Most High is truly in control. He is the one that's in control of the knowledge, the wisdom, the understanding, and how to move forward as a people. Brother Ron, thank you so much again for the impact that you're making around the world. Brother Lorvins, thank you for your impact. And family, as always, love yourselves without hating your enemies. And until next time, family, y'all bless and salama. Thank you.